lots of fun, Marissa. Oh, so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Mics are hot. Hey, guys. How are you? I'm Marissa Smith, and I'm here with the two Daves, you guys. This is going to be super fun. I've got Dave Cyrus with me. We're the Daves you know. These are the Daves I know. I also have David Feldman with me. I'm the good Dave. He's the good Dave. I've got Evil Dave and <laughs> Angel Dave, both on my shoulder. Um, You're objectively a worse person than me. Why would you say that? Uh, let, well, let's get through the intro. So, I'm uh, Dave Cyrus. Tell yeah. us a little bit about yourself. I mean, it's true, but why would you say that? Well, let's get the intros out. Uh, I'm Dave Cyrus. Hi. I'm a comic. I'm a writer. And I, uh, I, I don't know, you might... If you've heard of me in any capacity, it might be because I used to do a bunch of videos uh, ambushing hate groups on YouTube. It is the closest thing I've ever gotten to relevant. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've been a writer for uh, SNL and uh, Comedy Central Roasts and uh, Triumph the Insult Comic Dog. That's how I know David. We were both Triumph writers. We're also the only Triumph writers that are not writing for our cartoon president on Showtime. That's is like, that true? It's everyone. Oh, it's everyone else we know. It's great. Yeah. Hmm. We're We're not liked i didn't know that well it's true and you heard it here first why is that why why do they hate us dave because you refuse to write packets for one. Oh, you because you you despise the industry and refuse to play along with it in any way oh okay anyway a... introduce yourself uh my name is david feldman i'm a comedy writer and my phone should just ring i shouldn't have to ask for work people should just know i'm funny and I shouldn't have to go into an office. I should just be allowed to write on my couch. And people should just be grateful that I'm writing for them and they should hand me a paycheck. Now you probably can't tell through the uh, audio, but David Feldman is the world's oldest living working comedian. He, uh, how many times were you on MTV's uh, Half Hour Comedy Hour? A lot. Yes, many times. And I was old back then. He was the old guy on MTV's Half Hour Comedy Hour. And that he was, was the diversity spot? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> no, they... he was both Jewish and balding. So, yes. <laughs> this was like 20 years ago. And they kept putting me on and they kept saying, you know, you're the oldest person we've ever put on MTV. And by 20 years ago, he means 28 years ago. Was it 28 years ago? I'm pretty sure, yeah. <laughs> you may be right. I'm, I, don't think, I don't think there was Do you even... remember me on that? Yes. Well, I was a fan of yours. Really? Yes. Uh, you you all you were the guy who always like seemed like you were going to be straight laced, and then you just started saying things that made you think you're just a mentally ill person in a nice suit. <laughs> I guess. I didn't know you knew me as a stand up. Yeah. Wow. How, what else would I have known you as? What are I, you I, I recognized you when I met you. What possible reason could I have known? You've never been on. A, you've never had a good a real acting job. Yeah. You've never. Been, you hadn't at that point won any awards. Right. How would I have? possibly known who you were aside from stand-up i saw you from satiristas i saw you in uh before that no but the thing i knew who you were when i saw you at satirista so it had to be from mtv because right. you've never been on tv in any other capacity and i've been I, on tv and i knew who you were so i'm i'm actually confusing myself right now trying to figure out how i could have known who you were what about all my conan shots i guess i don't watch conan i mostly only watched the first 15 minutes of conan what about on cops when my wife had me arrested several times. Oh, so that was you. Well, yes. I like to take my shirt off and have my face digitized. Oh, yes. I thought that was the bath salts, but he was the only person. <laughs> he was the only person on cops with the digitization actually reached his hair plugs. It was the whole head. <laughs> Not because that's a. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, because otherwise everyone would know your identity. Cause yes. Yes. Bath salts. Yes. Yes, bath salts. So. T uh, I, I feel like this is going to get confusing. Like, should I call you Dave 1, Dave 2? How do well, you guys I'm normally Dave, do this? and he's David. Okay, so David. Because I grew up. Uh, How about Jewish Dave and Jewish Dave? Yeah, this is not getting easier. Uh, <laughs> I'm, well, I'm, I always go by Dave, and my professional name is Dave Cyrus, because as a kid, my uncle's boyfriends were always named David. Okay. They, every time his name was David, and it, really, and it taught me as a young child that, oh, if, you're, if, if your name is David... You're David if you're gay and Dave if you're straight. Okay. And, I, and actually, that that is actually kind of hard and fast rule. You can call me Dr. Feldman. Okay. Because I'm considered the joke dentist in a writing room. Okay. There's, you know, there All are the joke doctors. I'm the joke dentist. Okay. 
Are you like a orthodontist, periodontist? What's your specialty? Uh, in, investing in pornography, which is how most <laughs> dentists make their money. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. When when gold is up, because most dentists buy gold, right? And when they have to sell their gold because it's peaking, they invest in pornography. Well, what? Yeah. What? In, how do you invest in pornography? Well, there was a time when pornography was profitable. Okay. I, I mean, like they would produce pornography? They would put money into pornography. That's true. There is no money in it anymore. No. The, the internet. The market has crashed in porno. It's just, it, there's no value whatsoever anymore. Well, it's the studio system that disappeared. I, that, that, you know, in my day, porn stars were trained by the studio in all the fine arts of lovemaking. And now everybody just thinks they're a porn star. They're not. Yeah. Early days of porn, when everyone had to have those morality clauses, and mm-hmm. the studio would control your lives. The cursing, yeah. by the way. The what? The cursing in porn these days. Yeah. I'll, I, you know what I hate is the spitting. Yes. I think it's very rude. <laughs> There's a lot of spitting in porn now, and I find it it takes me right out of it. Mm-hmm. I, I, like, I feel like you do have to like have a, like a spitting consent. If, if if you know, like you should consent to a spit if it's going to happen because that is <laughs> it is it is rude. I think it's like the same thing as like you know, like if if, if you're about to shoot a load in someone's eye, like give a warning if you're going to do it. Right, and uh, no, there's a lot of things where like people, there's a very anything goes attitude in sex sometimes. Like like Marissa, you're black and we're white, so I just want to make sure people know that before I ask this. Uh, have you ever had like a white guy you were having sex with like cross a line? Because I, I have so many black female friends who have said that like white guys and vice versa, like that they think that the rules are suspended <laughs> during sex. By the way, I just want to say that I don't see you as black or white or man or woman or human. <laughs> Dr. Feldman doesn't see color. <laughs> I don't uh. see I don't see race, gender, species. I just see human beings um, very politically correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Dave, has uh, anybody? You, you didn't answer his question. I'm about to. Oh, I was. Sorry. I was listening to you about your species. Um, so, has anybody crossed a line? I. I would say that I've had. Uh, I haven't had anybody use the N word. Mm. I think that's what you're going for. No, not 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 necessarily. For him, the N word wasn't open ended because I have a different example. For him, the N word is no. But. Uh, but I, I definitely, on the board. Oh boy. I I definitely have had someone say like uh, like I'm your slave, which I thought was weird. You're their slave. Or no, they're that slave? they're my slave. Oh, so they're they're like that's a real like that's kind of trying too hard. Kind of like I'm yeah. not racist. I'm the slave. Yeah. Yeah. So like, and that was kind of like uh, I don't know what's happening here. I've actually said to women, "You own me." Yeah, he said that too. Yeah, I mean, but th- is that is that a ra- because I've said that. Just the power that this woman has over me, you own me, is kind of, I guess that that's it. wrong to say that to. Well, I think it's specific to a uh, new interracial coupling is when it might be a little inappropriate right. to make slavery references. Now, here's, actually, I, was, I wasn't getting at specifically like that word. I actually was going to say like, because here's what I, when I have uh, dated uh, black girls, here's what actually, n- now that I think about it right now, I'm realizing, is it okay that once we're having sex, it's now okay for me to touch her hair, because I've actually I've I know you know I know not to do that, right? But I've never asked once the sex starts if that's okay. It's, Is that okay? Did no. she just get her hair done that day? Not the kind of girls I date. Okay, <laughs> like if because like you know if it's like not fresh mu- hair, I'm not, I'm not messing it up. Yeah, I mean, I think as long as it's not, like, fresh hair or, like, you know, if she's just, like, got a weave put in, then that's going to be uncomfortable. But, like, yeah, I I'm think not that's... not pulling. I'm, I'm being respectful. I just... No, like, a new weave just touching is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable in itself. Okay. It, it's tight. It's, it gets real tight. Um, but, yeah, I think that it's fine. Like, I think it's just, like, that's kind of, like, lost in a moment kind of thing. That's not, like, you know, like, saying something inappropriate. Plus, I, you know, if... If you're already having sex, like you're you're touching bodies, like it's at that point everybody's kind of into it. I think that it's like when people say weird shit, then I think it's kind of like, oh, what is that? Yeah, a very good record of not bringing race into this sex, <laughs> uh, in, in the into the dirty talk at the very least. Then that's why you're the good Dave. Go on. <laughs> yes, 
That's why I'm a fan of silent porn, the old black and white. Mm -hmm. When talkies came into being in the late 20s. Like Did Lam you still have to crank those? Yeah, well, I was cranking something. Yeah. But, uh, He's a big Hedy Lamar fan. I just think silent porn was better because you never had to worry about what they were saying. Mm -hmm. But this and was before your time. Because yeah. now you gotta, you got to be worried about who's listening, who mm -hmm. overhears you, because they could use bad language. I mean, I guess you could do the same with like foreign porn because you don't know what they're saying either. But Well, they dub it. Oh, do they? Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, they have people from other countries putting things in women's mouths. Words, wow. but... Okay, help me out there. <laughs> this help is, me. I like how this is so far from the show, Marissa. And <laughs> okay, let's... <laughs> I'm sorry. Am I, am no, I, ru am I ruining... It's it's no, no. It's far from the show she wanted to have. That I really no, it's, that. it's it's fine. It's fine. We're, we'll get there. We're just... We're, we're on the topic of porn, and while we're talking about porn... Uh, so we have two women that uh, came out, like you know, in the last couple of days, saying that they had affairs with uh, Donald Trump, uh, Stormy Daniels, and then a um, Playboy model. Yeah, yeah, Playboy model, and allegedly their affairs both were around the same time, 2006. Also, while Melania was either pregnant or just had right, it a, seems like his cheating did spike around her pregnancy, mm -hmm. which is. Kind of exactly what you'd expect of him. I bet he does consider pregnant women gross. Yeah, probably. And even you know, though he looks like a pregnant woman, but yeah, well, he, well, he <laughs> not no, he looks like he actually looks more like a woman giving birth because he's so flushed. He's got that. He's got that glow of like a woman who's like in the middle of labor. Uh, yeah, no, he. Uh, yeah, he had. Set. We can curse, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he, so he, he fucked a porn star and this other girl. Now With, I wonder if without they're mad. protection. Well, I mean. When he said, like, the Secret Service wasn't there? No, like, he wasn't wearing a condom. Mm. Yeah, well, she's a porn star. So, yeah, you know, she's like, clean, obviously. <laughs> she, she, wouldn't, she wouldn't have her job if she was, you know, if she, if she was dirty. Uh, there's uh, the funny thing about the, the, the porn story is that I wonder if they're mad at each other because it overlapped, if they all thought that they were his only mistress. And, uh, by the way, we know you saw the story of why she broke up with him, the Playboy one. What he was he, a racist. What he yeah, you know, you heard what he said specifically in a limo to uh, one of her friends. Oh, something like her friend, like big black cock or something like yes. that. Yes, uh, she mentioned having a black boyfriend, and he said, "You just like big black dick." Here's the thing about that: every single one of his fans thinks that's hilarious. Yeah, like they think that's witty, because it's like that's part of why they love him so much is because they feel like he's bringing back just being the classless piece of shit. Right. And they all kind of resent the world and it's, the way it's changing and that, you know, that's not what everyone considers funny anymore. Even though that was never really what, like, a comedian thought was funny. That's a, that's what your, you know. That's like your, NASCAR. That's what your Walmart drunken stepdad funny. thinks is funny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, he also called his her mother an old hag because they're the same age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause she I think that's what really pissed her off. Yeah, but she has every right to bring up the uh, the big black dick line too, because it's just it's just so utterly believable. Yeah, but I also don't believe that she's going to be that offended by that herself. Well, we don't know. No, it, it's a it's an offensive thing to say to your friend's face. It's one thing to say it like in mixed company. It's another thing to say to the face of the person who's dating that man. You just, like it's so dehumanizing to say that eye to eye. It's a shitty joke, but when you're in front, of, there's a He's the kind of person who, like, he will say things that other people might say in private, but he'll say it to your face and make it not fun. Make it not tongue in – there's nothing tongue-in-cheek about it to him. Right. People think it's funny because it sounds tongue-in-cheek, and it's not. He actually feels this way. He actually does believe that the only reason a white woman would date a black man is because she has a, a giant penis fetish. Right. So I, I you think – You know, the, th the thing with Trump is – and this culture is – I, when you f hear it for the first time, you go, or I do, I go, well, that's not that horrible. But any, everything with Trump, well, it's not that horrible. And then you say, well, would you allow your children to say that? Would you say it? And then you begin to, oh, no. But they, they, they've worn me down to the point where I'm just saying, ah, it's not the worst thing in the world. But when you add it all up... This is the worst thing in the world. And th this is a man who, by the way, 
grabs women by the pussy. Mm-hmm. He pays these women ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars. Well, actually, both the porn star and the Playboy model both said he tried to pay me, but I said no. Right. Right. And then he pays them one hundred thirty thousand dollars to be quiet, not just to protect Melania, but probably to protect him because you know that it's not natural, normal sex. There's some some urination involved and some. Something, Something scatological. Yes. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna guarantee that. I'm not gonna say I know. You for think a he's certain. capable of normal, and you know, good Christian sex? Um, well, the fact that he's cheating might be the part that makes it worth it for him. But don't you think he's? Into- I think he just doesn't want Ivanka to find out. I don't think he gives a shit about Melania finding out. But his daughter is gonna be real pissed at him, and that's gonna turn her off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I think we he... need to let go of this idea that Ivanka has a soul. Everyone, everyone keeps projecting their own sense of morality on all the women in this White House as if they're all just these put upon poor. You know, no, no, these people all chose to be part of this. No, I mean, like if he, if if Tiffany, Ivanka found Tiffany out didn't, yeah. that that he was cheating on her, that she would stop banging him. That's what I was going to say. Oh, I'm not oh, saying oh, that oh, she has oh, a soul. Oh, it was an incest joke. Yeah, okay. that was I, an incest well, joke. Well, she's a KGB oh, agent. Sorry. Or FSB. This is a fact that Ivana, the first wife, is from Czechoslovakia. And right. She was sent over to be Trump's handler by the KGB. And then after the fall of the Soviet Union, they passed it on to Melania, who is from Slovenia. Yeah, I believe so. And that was an Eastern European Iron Curtain country. And mm-hmm. she's a handler for Putin. Well, he's been trying to get involved with Russia since the 80s with, like, Reagan when he was trying to be, like, some sort of, like, attache between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. Well, it anytime there's strife in the world, he just announces that he could fix it because he's a, you know, malignant narcissist. He said the same thing about Israel and Palestine over and over again. I can easily fix it. I can just send me to negotiate. I mean, he was always, you know, everyone growing up, I don't know everyone, but, I mean, I certainly know what it's like to recognize a narcissist with a coke problem. Now I'm not saying he does coke. He just acts I will. like it. I will. He acts like it. I don't yeah. think he does coke. I think I, I have heard. <laughs> that yeah, he's got a lot. He of, sniffs a lot, well, and he, he also. A lot. I think it's probably more likely amphetamine poisoning. You know, the uh, that he's just getting prescription amphetamines for weight loss. That was a big story. Uh, that you know, 20 years ago he was taking fenfen. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. And he does act like someone with amphetamine poisoning because if you look at the symptoms of it, it's lack of focus, lack of sleep, paranoia, grandiosity. It. Sounds Dangers. like a cokehead. It, it lines up a lot. I mean, well, they're the same. They work the same in the brain. I'm not like I said. I he doubt has a brain. I I doubt that it's straight up cocaine. I don't think that the president is. I, I not that I put it past him. I find it a little harder to believe that the president is scoring coke every day at the White House because otherwise he never would have fired Bannon. That's true because Bannon would be the one. Bannon getting... would definitely have been the guy to get it for him. Right. So that I'm going to say just you know, the, yeah. I don't know. Hope Hicks looks like she's a re- resourceful gal. I think she could get a, a baggie or two, an eight ball when he needs one. I don't know. I think, uh, and Bannon, I, I feel like he would have had a heart attack by now if he was like rolling in the coke. Like he's That's just, what they say. I mean, you have to, don't forget, he's also 36 years like, old, so he doesn't look great for his age. Bannon? Yeah, isn't he? No. I thought I was three years older than Steve Bannon. You're thinking of Kushner. No, no, I was thinking of Steve Bannon. Uh, no, You're Steve Bannon it... just, yeah, it was a joke. Oh, okay. He just looks like garbage. Uh, but also, He looks like garbage defecated more garbage. <laughs> I, some people are just able to survive it longer than others. He looks like some prom queen had a baby in a dumpster and somebody found it and decided to adopt the garbage around the baby. He yeah. looks like if you could brine a person. <laughs> <laughs> he looks... Like he, he looks like something syphilis would get. He looks like somebody was dared to live in the salt flats for a few years. <laughs> he looks like a tumor on an elephant's ass. <laughs> he looks like a fart that lived. Great head of hair. Yes. Fantastic, fantastic head of hair. Yeah. This is true. By but, the way, I, I, honestly, though, we're being very childish about this, and like this is why he l- <laughs> hates literally every Jew on earth, because people like us are making fun of him. And we're trying to take the high road, but we're making these insults. And this is why maybe it is our, you and me's fault, that he 
desperately wanted to keep his kids from going to school with Jews. He did. That, uh, he did. That's he true. Did. Yeah. It is he, true. Wanted to, he wanted to know a list of how many Jews his daughters were going to school with, and he wanted to know why there was so much Jew literature. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then, of course, there was that article, uh, what was it, in uh, was it The Federalist? Someone had an article about how uh, all Jews agree that, Jew, that Jewish children are the worst. I, there was an article about that, defending the idea of not wanting your kids to go to school with Jews and just doing a bunch of Jap jokes. I, you sure it wasn't a Breitbart? <laughs> I'm sure it was Breitbart. Yeah. I think it's you don't want your kids going to school with kids who have Jewish parents. I think that's the... Yeah. Let's not, let's not promulgate stereotypes. I'm not trying to. It's, you know, I mean... The guy did not. He, I don't if think it makes he, you feel any better. I'm sure he doesn't want his kids going to school with black people either. It does make me feel better, actually, You're a welcome. lot better. Fortunately, that wasn't an issue with the private schools he was sending them to <laughs> to begin with. Otherwise, I'm sure we would have heard about it. I'm sure you know it, the kind of these were L.A. expensive private schools, so I'm sure there were black students, but like <laughs> they were the adopted kids of Steven Spielberg. <laughs> so. Oh God, yeah. Uh, this is going in an interesting direction. Um, but, yeah, they were also probably like everyone knew their name. Yes. And they pretended it's because they were they liked them. So, anyway, yeah, whole cabinet sucks. Yeah, it does. It really does. Um, so. Especially, uh, I mean, I'm going to go back with to the uh, Hope's, Hope Hicks business. And uh, so, like, I guess, like, her her boo just got fired. Um, Porter, right? yeah. Rob, Rob Porter was of course fired for uh, revelations that he beat his wife, and they were ignoring that. The FBI told them uh, last year, over over like se- what seven months ago, that that he beat his wife, and they didn't do anything about it because he said we were still investigating. Mm-hmm. That right. was the White House's line. They said, "Well, our investigation wasn't over." Yeah, the investigation was, well, did she burn the dinner or not? And it was, um, yes, <laughs> they wanted evidence. And that investigation would have, I'm sure, would have wrapped up shortly after uh, Trump was no longer in office. It would yeah. be, you know, the reason the shooter in Florida slipped through the cracks and the FBI didn't investigate is they were so busy trying to get security clearance for all these wife beaters in the Oval Office. That's what Trump won't talk about. Right, He's, right. He talks about the Russian investigation Clog in the wheels. Look, the FBI can only do one thing at a time, obviously. Yeah. So they what there's only five agents. By the way, has anyone tried using this in a trial yet? Has it like have I'm 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 being serious about this. From this point onward, why isn't every person up on federal charges saying that the FBI is a fake organization that's just trying to, you know, grind axes like why isn't every single person on federal charges using the same argument that the fbi cannot be trusted well and why isn't but, trump but, but, considering but, just releasing every single person convicted in a, in federal court well the thing is when he goes to trial if he ever does he won't be able to use that defense this is all propaganda this is not like legal reasoning it's also not the first time the FBI wasn't trusted. I mean, the FBI wasn't trusted in, like, the 60s during, like, the Civil Rights Movement, and they had, like, all sorts of dossiers. And um, You could trust them to kill Fred Hampton. You know, I mean... It, <laughs> Nothing? Well, we're talking about, I mean, we're talking about the, the tail end of Hoover, right? We're right. Talk, and who, no one is... We're certainly not, you know, defending the way Hoover ran that organization. But at the same time, it's like... It's the same exact argument as... Every guy who is arrested for assaulting someone, bringing up Eric Garner. Like, you can't just, you cannot say that because that cop was evil, because that cop did something wrong, that you are innocent. Because we can't not have law enforcement. Right. It's it just, it, whether, no matter how bad people are at it, you have to still have law enforcement. And, and as bad as J. Edgar Hoover was, he took responsibility you and knew who, mighty fine in a dress. Go I was going to say you knew who wore the dress in that organization. Yeah. <laughs> there was no, nice. He, and he was a good, wholesome Christian. Him and Clyde Tolson, they shared a bed. But yes, I, I defend the FBI. Well, right I wonder which now. one was the bottom. Oh, had to be Hoover, because I mean he was that. You got to figure. He's you know spent, why he was called Hoover? Nice, <laughs> very good. Because he. You don't have to finish it. Everyone knows <laughs> where this is going. Vacuum, we get it. <laughs> yes. Because he... 
Sucked a cock. <laughs> just couldn't let it go, huh? Just can't, just can't trust the people listening to fill in the gaps. We're gonna spoon feed it that badly. Yes, the way Clyde Tolson spoon fed ten cc's to Jay Edgar. You know what yes. the J stood for? What did it stand Jism. for? Jism. Did you know? <laughs> Go ahead. I love how much this is lining up with the with the show you wanted. I want to be political. I, I'm, I'm, she said, "Get your most there. political comedian." We're, we're doing it. We're doing yeah. it. We're 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 easing into it. I'm political. Now, here's the thing about Hope Hicks. Hope Hicks has now dated two people in the White House with with photographic history of assaulting women. Right. Right. So it's Corey a Lewandowski, Lewandowski and then and Rob Porter, both people who we have seen photographs of bruises Kardashian that they gave said women to her. Kardashian said, "I said black." Guys, not black eyes, black guys. Mm -hmm. Is that funny? Sure. So, uh, <laughs> no. Here's my. I'm just drinking water. This is a really <laughs> weird question, but like, do you think that Trump is bothered by a woman in his White House dating multiple men in a sort of. Do you think he's jealous? Whether he likes her or not, do you think he gets jealous that she would settle for men who are not him? If she's like dating multiple men in the White House, because don't you get the impression he's like that he's like Arnold Schwarzenegger, where no matter what the girl looks like, he just has to have her if he's in his house. Well, I'm I'm sure that she's he's getting a side of that also. I I just think that. <laughs> side of that. Um, I just think that it it's just like, I think she's just basically like you know like like a side dish for like everybody. Like, Lewandowski was married, and like I um. I think that uh, oh, he was dating her while they were married. He yeah, was married? Th wow. they were married. And then I guess like the whole affair blew up because they got into like a fight out in the streets, like in front of Trump Tower. And like um, there was like media around. And like so then I guess the wife found out about it. And I don't know if, if he's completely divorced or just separated, but he was married um, when he's she started the affair with him. And then uh, I think Porter just recently got divorced or... And know. also Lewandowski's wife considered uh, Lewandowski uh, grabbing that woman by the arm and dragging her to the ground as cheating. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what, you burnt his dinner too? Um, <laughs> she was a journalist for Breitbart. She was. I'm just then saying. They, then they attacked her. Yeah. For daring to be... Yeah, for for not covering it up. I mean, that's what Breitbart ha did. They it was Ben Shapiro's only good moment. Didn't he quit Breitbart? Yes, yes, actually, he had, uh, actually had a good moment. Yeah, well, I mean, once you're working the once you're working for Breitbart, you know, it's it. You seem like you're putting on a bit of an air when you act like you have a you know a, a moral, moral compass. compass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think that's well. That's sort of what happened with Trump in general. Is we're watching all these people move the scoreboard of their own morality every day, just to not be wrong. And it's actually like I was saying this earlier today. If this were a movie, you would swear that Trump was created to destroy the party. He's almost like a blueprint of how can you destroy a party by leading these people so far off a cliff that there's no chance of getting back to it by the time they realize that they're in the sky because that's sort of what he does every day. He forces people who want to not admit they were wrong to endorse him to agree that something else is okay. Right. And it, I mean, don't you think Putin owns the Republican party? You think it just, he just stopped with Trump? Don't you? Th it's pretty cheap. That trolling farm only cost $1.2 million a month. Right. So you're going to tell me, Putin, who is supposedly the richest man on the planet, he can't afford to buy the entire Republican Party. You think he? I mean, yeah, if you wrote, it, it doesn't the, stop with Trump, but it didn't start with Trump because, like, the, you know, the the troll farming started in 2014. But and you would not believe that as a story if you if you heard it. You would think it's a it's a it's a shitty script to say that oh that Russia is going to install that guy and mm -hmm. be able to basically make us a puppet government, a client state. Where you know we're, we're practically uh, Cleopatra after the Romans uh, right. took over Egypt. Just yeah, you're you are the the quote leader, but you're not the leader. You're a you're you're a garrison. You're you're just there to keep the other. You're, you're just you're there to talk about how great Rome. Your ass. Yeah, how great. And Rome by is. the way, as a Republican, I support getting rid of the estate tax, or as I call it, the death tax, because I know a lot of uh, family troll farms that had to give up the troll farm 
because they couldn't afford to pay the death tax. So right, and that's one of our biggest, you know, parts of our economy now is the troll farm. Yeah, yeah, is uh, the the thousands of Macedonian and Russian teenagers who just start fights. Uh, we were talking about this the other day about after the school shooting, uh, the the Parkland one, because obviously by the time this gets on you the had air, to have a, that, you had to differentiate. Between well, yeah, school I mean, shootings. you can't just say the school shooting. It's like which one? <laughs> yeah, uh, Russia jumped in with a bunch of uh, trolls. They said, okay, this is an opportunity. Let's jump in there. Let's start getting people angry. Let's start defending, you know, the Second Amendment because, you know, Russia really cares about if the Americans have the right to bear arms. And, uh, I mean, it's just one of those things that that's one of those things. That's the goalpost of your morality. If you're okay with that, you're okay with that. That means what what is the Republican Party going to criticize people for doing later? What are they going to have against people? What are they going to say when they're running against someone? Oh, well, I'd be better because you are blank. Because they've already said it's okay to be accused of, of molesting multiple children. They've already mm-hmm. said that it's okay to just be an absolute classless bully, uh, a, a lowlife, a con man. They don't really have – They've. that's what I'm saying. Like It's like he was designed to destroy the party because when this is over – there's going to be nothing left of them. No, no, you're, I disagree with you. Because when you're protecting money, which is what the Republican Party has always been about, you can say anything. Like, Roy Moore, was he convicted of anything? No. Where is his due process? I'm not for child molestation, but if he's never been arrested, was Trump ever arrested? No. No. So... He's innocent in this country. You know, in this country, you're innocent until proven guilty. That's what the Republicans are going to say. Right. Well, I mean, we look, we're living in a post-reality world. Post-truth. Well, yeah, I mean, you can – it's not just truth. It's the – it's it's everything. It's – I mean – People will say anything to protect what they have. That's what the Republican Party has shown us. They're, as, as, as they've said before, when you talk about – Money, God leaves the room, and they're they're a godless party because all they care about is money. So, people say and believe anything to keep what they have, yeah, and get more. And there is something, there's something occurring in the Republican Party. And look, we have a problem across the board with honesty. I think the left has grown grown less honest over time, uh, in congruence with the rest of the world. But it's not even on the scale of how much the right lies consistently because the right is is now truly experimenting with with just manipulating groupthink they're they're truly experimenting with the 1984 idea that if you tell people to just say we were never at war with them we weren't mm-hmm. and you know liberals lie by being uh misleading and taking sides and then but but i mean there's but no one has ever experienced this idea that you can just say the words fake news and even though there's a video of you saying the exact thing you never said a high percentage of people will force their minds to not believe what they saw and think that the video was doctored and that it's just like that's the thing that i think is is so crazy a lot of people you have evidence that to prove that this person is lying but then Everyone thinks that the evidence is is now the lie, and I, but I I kind of think going back to David's point is that um, when you, when you're kind of saying like uh, the Republican Party is godless, I always find it so interesting that the evangelicals still are, are, are holding on to him even though it, so many things are coming out that are, are, are against their quote unquote beliefs, and I mean I'm sure that some of them have money but they don't have the like one percenter money well their leaders have money and they listen to them franklin graham jr jerry falwell jr these are the the sons of these well leaders who had to inherit their father's business because they couldn't make it on their own they they went into their father's business and they early on sidled up next to donald trump and they're giving him mulligans. Well, family. Yeah. Uh, James Dobson's group was. What are they called? The family. Uh, uh, focus on the family. Focus on the family. Well, the uh, the evangelicals that are giving Trump carte blanche and just saying that their morality that they apply to every other politician doesn't apply to him. Those are the evangelicals that. It was always just about the authoritarianism. It was never about any of the things Jesus said. These are Old Testament evangelicals. They just wanted a daddy. 
to tell them what to do and to let them take their hands off the wheel of life. And because it's very comforting to be told the world is significantly simpler than you think it is. And that's what he does for those people. He, and it just shows that everyone who, the argument we had about evangelicals with Bush was the same one. It was, if, you're, if you really believe in Jesus, why would you want us to be so warlike? Why would you want these? And the criticism, I mean, every criticism of the Republican Party, of the hypocrisy, is something that exploded under Trump. I mean, there was a line um, in SNL during the primaries that one of the jokes that I got into one of the primary sketches was, uh, I, I think it was maybe Ted Cruz saying, uh, what Donald Trump is doing is wrong. The Republican Party does not say racist things. We imply them over decades of policy and, mm-hmm. and racism. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, he was blowing up their spot. Yeah. I mean, everyone's made the point that he is the the monster that grew out of the pile of shit they were throwing mm-hmm. that they because they thought that, you know, it's it's like the first like when a new religion exists, the people who created it obviously knew it was fake. But then when you start having leaders that actually believe it, that's the second wave. And that's what Trump is. Trump is someone who actually believed all the all the propaganda that they said, oh, these are just things we need to say to manipulate certain people because it's for their best interest. Now, those Republicans, they truly believe it's in their best interest. They, they, they do believe they're doing something right for the people because they believe, well, we lie because we have to to win. And if we don't win, we're gonna, then everyone's going to die. So everything we do is okay because we're saving the world from, you know, the you-know-whats of the world because they believe that we're, we're going to be in chaos. And they just, they hate the idea of losing. That's why they're willing to just go along with whatever. Because at the end of the day, you know, I'm surprised Trump has never said this quote, uh, but it's the quote from Hitler of uh, when it doesn't matter what you do in an election, because if you lose, it doesn't matter what you did. No one cares. And if you win, there's no one to answer to. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of the kind of scorched earth policies they're going with now is whatever we do is worth it. Now, I'm not here to say that Donald Trump is like Hitler, because that's just a hacky thing to say. And Hitler knew something. He had taste when it came to architecture. Yeah, that's that's one of the, the differences. But at the same time, I've had when you make references to Trump, I don't I don't tend to call him Hitler, I do, but he is a fascist. He does believe in fascism. I've had people say baby you know, Mussolini. Yeah. No, he, oh, he's very close to Mussolini, much more. Mussolini so. had more hair. Yeah. <laughs> but the uh, the kind of argument where. Um, he, when you call him, you know, you say, well, you can't make references to that. You say, well, why have you been telling him my whole life never again? Why as a Jew have I heard never again if when we see evidence of it, we ignore it? And, they, and the person said, they're like, well, you, you can't compare what he's doing to marching people into ovens. And I said, when you said never again, did you mean wait until the people are actually in the in ovens? The ovens? <laughs> Is that how far we're supposed to—we have to wait till it's already happened? Oh, I think your Godwin's law, which says you lost the argument when you compare somebody to Hitler, that law has been— Well, repe- it stipulates that— has been repealed. That, it it's stipulates repealed. that no one could possibly be Hitler. All these arguments that they use against criticizing Trump are all arguments that mean at their base there is no such thing as right and wrong. When they say that, well, you're partisan, you're liberal, this is the way people talk about their president, what you're saying is it's impossible for a president to deserve criticism because everything ends up being, it's just relativism. It's clinging to relativism. You mention anything about Trump and they just bring up Hillary as if I've never in my life heard the person who lost an election brought up every fucking day by the person who won it. It doesn't exist. It's something that they're just okay with. No one remembers second place. How often did Barack Obama bring up John McCain? Like, never. Or George W. Bush, who really gave him a, a shit sandwich to deal with when he took over. Two yeah. wars and a depression. Yeah, and the, the, the argument they'll have then is, oh, well, look at all the money Obama spent. Yeah, why is that? You're comparing money he spent in the middle of a gigantic depression to, to money that that Trump spent when he inherited an amazing economy because he does, because a guy who's supposed to, his one thing he's supposed to be good at is understanding financial matters, doesn't understand why you don't try to have a stimulus during an economic upturn. He doesn't even understand the concept of overheating an economy, which, you know, is going to backfire. And Are you talking about the infrastructure bill? Yeah. 
I'm saying that. Well, I'm saying that in general, the well, amount the of stimulus, money, like with the the, the tax cuts yeah, the and all tax, that. The idea, the, the all idea the money that he's trying to pump into the economy. Stim- tax cuts are not stimulus. They, no, they, I mean they're. But they're, that's what they're calling that's them. That's what they're calling. Yeah, but it's it, a yeah. lie. Tax well, cuts do not stimulate. They Reagan proved that they don't do anything for the economy. It's like a yeah. little bump. Even and, and Kennedy's tax cuts didn't go into effect until Johnson was president. They always say, well, C- Kennedy gave us a tax cut. Yeah, it went into effect under Johnson, and Johnson blew up the economy with... Anyway, go ahead. Well, the only reason Johnson gets credit for that is because Ted Cruz's father... Killed Kennedy. Right. Killed Kennedy, yeah. I I don't know. I, I And it is crazy, but like we're talking about a president that said that they were good people that are Nazis, but... No, he doesn't consider them Nazis. And actually, he said, who even knows what the KKK believes in anymore because... They believe in him. Well, there's two major reasons why he needs to defend the KKK. One, doesn't want to lose their votes. And two, his fucking father was in the KKK. It's not not a theory. That's not slander. He was in two newspapers getting arrested in full Klan gear. Was he in Klan gear? They one newspaper listed him as, as the people getting arrested, and the other newspaper said only costumed Klan members were arrested. Okay. At the same event, they had his name and his address. And this was actually in New York City, like yes. or in Madison Square Garden or the old Madison Square Garden. It was marching against Italians and the Irish because that's how long ago we're talking. This is mm-hmm. pre Civil Rights era. This is the father or the grandfather. Father. The father. The father. Fred. Fred Phelps. Yeah. Marched Fred against Trump. Oh, I say Fred Phelps. That's yeah. funny. Uh, Fred Trump marched against Irish and Italian Catholics. Now, people have said, well, what if he was there fighting the, 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 the KKK? Well, one article said they only arrested KKK. And also, you expect me to believe that a German Protestant was on the, was, was on the other side of this, that he was, happened to be, he was getting protested? And let's not forget, it's not like Fred Trump has a great record with racism either. He's in two Woody Guthrie songs about not letting black people live in his neighborhood. Right. Woody Guthrie called him by his name. This is, there was a song. That is like, that is a sitcom joke. I think it was in a sitcom before it happened. (laughs) I think there, I I can't remember which one, but I'm dying to remember. There was a, God, God, I wish I could remember what, what show it was. But there was a joke exactly like that about like, oh, yeah, he's so racist. In fact, his father was in, was in folk songs about, about how much he hated black people. I think it was Rest of Development. I can't remember. But the point is Trump worships his father because his mother didn't love him, according to all the articles I read. And defending the KKK is defending that his father was perfect. Well, he does not have a face mother could love. Well, he was cute back in the day. And eh, that's all relative. He was handsome. He was a hey, hey, look. What did I say about the about the liberals lying too? We are not going to get anywhere until you can sit that here and acknowledge not- that Donald Trump as a young man was extremely fuckable. We have to live in the truth. You can fuck him if you want to, Dave. You're telling me. Have you have you seen him as a young man? He was a very very handsome piece of shit. He was a Did he look like syphilitic back then too? No. <laughs> No, he, he, he aged badly, but that's look, that's what I'm saying. We need to come from a place of honesty. We ha- and I, I honestly would never have banked him. I don't believe you. You don't have to. I, I'm picturing it right now, and you seem happy. I don't know. I think you're thinking of Omarosa, which is kind of racist. It is racist to compare any black woman to Omarosa, yes. It's, uh, I remember, I forgot who it was, but someone was complaining that we're talking about Omarosa on Black History Month. It was a it was a black, uh, a black woman uh, on MSNB or on CNN. Okay. And with Don Lemon, and she was like, "It's Black History Month. Why are we talking about Omarosa?" <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys like been watching that on uh, Big Brother? I uh, know I don't watch. I I don't really watch Big Brother. Like this is the first time I've ever watched it. But like she's been talking about like being in the White House and um, Trump and like how we should all be scared and it's all worse than everyone thinks it is and it's just like all going to blow up and like it's it's the first time I've ever watched the show but it's actually the first time I've ever found her to be even remotely um well, in- sympathetic? Yeah, sympathetic, engaging, honest. Well, the right is now, you know, they're calling they're they're attacking her for all the reasons you should be attacking her because she is a histrionic pathological liar. But of course, let them do that because once again you're like okay why did he fucking hire her 
Why was she working <laughs> in the White House then? I mean, at SNL, we did a joke about Omarosa being working in the White House. Right. We right. had Sashir play Omarosa, and then he goes, thank you, Omarosa. And everyone laughed, and then it fucking happened. Right, <laughs> right, right. By the way, that sketch- You might have implanted the, the seed. One of the worst sketches on that episode, because he took out the punchline of the sketch, which is, was supposed to be, when I first saw this sketch, I, I hated it. So I fired the writers and wrote my own sketch. But we had to cut that part, making the whole sketch make no sense. Wasn't that Trump was in that sketch? Yeah, that was when he hosted. Did you meet him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a half hour loan with him. And? I signed an NDA. So we're, we're recorded right now. I can't really, <laughs> I can't really, I don't think I should say anything. So, no, did, uh, so did Stormy Daniels. Yeah, but uh, Michael Cohen, is that his name? Hasn't, Has, hasn't been lying about me. So. <laughs> no, no I, but I can tell you that uh, I was, yeah, we had the regular meeting where I sat down with him and I told him my idea, which is that I wanted him to play uh, Justin Bieber's Ghost of Christmas Future. <laughs> uh, you know, the 70-year-old Bieber who, you know, is just like, basically the, the that same Peter would bring him mm-hmm. to meet him and say, this is who you're going to become. Don't you want to change your ways? And then he leaves him alone. And as soon as St. Peter walks away, Trump Bieber goes, don't listen to a word he says. You're <laughs> killing it. We're still smoking weed every day. We're still banging 19 year olds. Keep doing what you're doing. Was there anything appealing about him? Um, he was already a candidate, right? Well, that's why he was there. Because right. he was in the primary and no one thought he could win. So no right. one thought it was a big deal to have him on. Was there anything about him that you liked? No. Nothing? No. Is he the kind of person. Not charismatic, not engaging, not focused. I, see, I, I shouldn't even. Uh, and I'm talking about him as a candidate in general, not that week. Uh, I'm just talking about him. General, how he, how I, how I observe him. You know, outside the job, I saw him as an extremely uh, unfocused, out of his depth person who has no business being where he is and is going to make the show terrible. Excuse me. I mean, in the the show. No, well, well, let me get uh, something I mean, clear. Meet the press. So. Hitler must be stopped unless you've signed a non-disclosure. Look, if I had signed, I, I'd an like NDA to stop the. Hitler. I'd like to stop the Holocaust. But well, I, nothing. But I, I have say, an NDA. Trust me, nothing I say about what happened that week is going to really turn the tide. It's not like it's not like he did anything that you'd be like. He said what? No. I would like to save. All the Muslims and Mexicans who live in America from being rounded up and placed in internment camps, but an NDA is an NDA. Yeah, well, believe me, if I saw any, if I saw something there that I thought would take down his presidency, I would let myself get sued. Why are we helps. talking about ICE? ICE is the big problem. Everything's a joke in the Trump administration, I think, except for ICE. What immigration is doing right what now? What they're I mean? doing to our Hispanic brethren. I think the people who work for ICE are cowards, you know? They are rounding up students, kids. They're following children home and then getting their parents. They arrest people under the cover of a federal courtroom, in the safety of a federal courtroom, because some woman is there who doesn't have documentation because she's charging her husband with assault and ICE shows up, they're cowards. If they were real law enforcers, they'd go round up the gang members with the guns. Right, but that But would, they're cowards. But that ICE, would be hard. Everybody keeps talking about MS-13, and they're saying, I, I had this argument with someone who was saying, you know, that a lot of the, that, you know, that, that is, it is true. MS-13, not the biggest gang, not the bloodiest gang, just the one that he decided to focus on because they're illegal immigrants uh, often, or, or just immigrants in general, and that they're saying, well, they're killing a lot of, uh, you know, black people in their neighborhoods. That's that they're trying to take over, uh, you know, the gangs and they're trying to, you know, exterminate the other gangs. So, like, yeah, that's bad. So go shoot them. Right. Go well, after them. No. You can't expect ICE to be as brave as a teacher in Florida and take a right. bullet. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, it's what's... Have you uh, seen the, the fat pigs who work for ICE? I mean, <laughs> they're, they're slobs. It's a union job. I'm for unions, but the people who work for ICE are cowards. And any woman who is married to somebody who works for ICE, anybody who has somebody as a boyfriend or a girlfriend who works for ICE, you should 
leave them. They don't. They're in it for what, the dental. And what's really disgusting it. about what's disgusting about the immigration issue right now, the way that we're trying to ramp up and and kick all these people out who previously would have given stays, it's the exact same reason why Trump demands and will not let go of the idea that he wants to ten, make our nuclear weapons 10 times what they are. It has nothing to do with anything we need. It is simply pandering to what he assumes the people who go to his rallies want to hear. So there is nothing practical about the wall, about about the increased ICE uh, 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 deportations, about this, about his need to revamp the nuclear program. He just is he just wants to make those people clap more. Well, what? Obama was really um, tough on immigration. Yeah, also, he was. And he was kind of like quietly deporting a, a lot of people. That's what people hated about it, that it was quiet. You know, they want to celebrate it. But at this, they want to taunt people with it. At the same time, like kind of like going back to to ICE with their uh, their detainment facilities. Like I had been watching like videos on on YouTube, and a lot of these facilities do like you know they they look like like animal kennels. Like they're mm-hmm. slabs of concrete. Some of them are outdoors. Um, they're mixed gendered, like like mixed age groups. You'll have like women and children like mixed in with like groups of men and um, far away from a public defender you can't get a lawyer to get out there right uh, especially like in in like uh, new mexico and arizona and you know it's like like dog kennels like they look literally look like dog kennels and uh i i don't know i don't know what what is going to to come about with all of that i mean i feel like with this Haiti, Africa, shithole countries thing that they're going to start like rounding up black people and like I'm going to have to start proving that I'm actually American and not African and try to tell one of those clowns, hey, I'm actually from Westchester. Do you hear this voice? Well, it's no, not going to work. No offense, Marissa, but uh, they don't need to resort to immigration to keep arresting black people. They, they have lots yeah. of other ways no, of but doing like, that. They, where are they going to send me? They, I don't even know where I'm from. Oh, no. They, I, that's what I'm saying. Prison. is like, they're, yeah, they're happy to keep you in the American prison system uh, in terms of how they how they figured out how to keep uh, how to keep black people in jail. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they don't they don't need to mix things because why would they want to deport you? They want to use you as prison labor. Mm-hmm. They want to they want to use you as slave labor for the next 20 years. Why do you pers- think I avoid all the marches, man? Yeah. I would be afraid to march. I, I don't. I don't do any of those marches. I mean, talk about checking your privilege as you know, as a white man. We have a responsibility to call the men and women who work for ICE pigs. But if you're a person of, I would be afraid if I were a person of color to take on ICE, or I would, I would, if I were, uh, you know, a newly arrived citizen, I'd be afraid to take on ICE. But I think people who work for ICE are pigs, and they're and also taking people that are American citizens that you know, kind of like if they don't have their ID with them right. or whatever. And to your point, like trying to get, I an saw attorney, born in East LA. Yes. It happens every day. ICE is un-American. We should deport ICE. There should be a travel ban for ICE. And it's not being discussed. Russia, you know, yes, Russia has made a mockery of our democracy, supposedly. I, th- I think it already is a mockery. I think, you know, anything to get rid of Trump, I, I'm for and but, I mean, uh, I think it was a mockery like with Bush. I mean, how about letting black people vote in this country? Well, like you said, you said, we wouldn't have to worry about Russia. You know, they talk about how these troll farms were convincing African-Americans that Hillary created the whole idea of a super predator. And Hillary is a, ra- a racist. And they, the Russians were telling black people to stay home. Well, the Republicans made it impossible in some swing states mm-hmm. for black people to vote. Yeah. So that's the issue, not Putin. Not these troll farms. Same with gerrymandering, making sure that uh, you know that that black people don't have the ability to even to even s- contribute to your electoral college number just by making sure that they that they just change. I mean, the gerrymandering the thing. The fact that prisoners shouldn't exist. In, in Florida, if you're a prisoner, you can't vote once once you're released and you've done your time. They've scrubbed the voting rolls. And if you have the same last name as one of those prisoners, you can't vote in another from another state. Mm-hmm. 
They take away your right to vote. So I don't, yeah, yeah, anything to get rid of Trump, anything to put Jared Kushner behind bars, but spare me your platitudes about Putin destroying our democracy. We've done a pretty good job of destroying our democracy. Well, it wasn't ourselves. good before, but things can always be worse. And that's the thing that bothers me the most. And I'll say about if the If we left, allowed black people to vote, if we allowed people who had prison records to vote, we wouldn't be susceptible to hacking from Russia. That's very, I mean, that's very likely true. But I want to say, this is what I hate about the left sometimes. Everything's always the worst it could be. And I'm always thinking, things are so capable of being worse than they are. Like, you have so many people say, oh, it doesn't matter what Trump does because this president was so bad. And it's like, no, you are completely delusional about how horrible things could potentially be. Everything is about degree. And that's where we lost this election because so many people said, well, well, you know, I'd rather not vote at all. It, there's literally no one worse than Hillary to me. And it's like, yeah, but in practice, you're a goddamn idiot because mm -hmm. you have no idea what you've actually signed on for. By the second that you say, I give up, you let people so much worse than the people who are trying to get your vote take over. And uh, it, well, they wanted to give it to Jill Stein, you know. Yeah, because she was going to fix everything. I know. Jill, Dr. Stein. Yes, Dr. Stein. Not Jill Stein, MD. Dr. Jill Stein, for some reason, uh, who is, of course, we now know, a Russian shill who accepted money and uh, was helped simply because she was someone else they thought could stop Hillary Clinton. And you know what's amazing? Republicans all our lives have been the hardliners with, with Russia, of course, and I know that's an old thing to say. Did you ever imagine that they would be defending Russia on this level or that they would be this comfortable with Russia trying to install a far left candidate also? But also the idea of they hate Hillary so much. Had they ever stopped and thought, why does Russia hate her so much? And why does that not make me like her? What is so bad about her that Russia wants her out? And why do you think that, why are you on Russia's side of that? She obviously did something. She obviously, there was something about her that made Putin terrified. Right. And she was the only one that actually scared Putin. But I. I She's a I, hardliner. She was a hardliner for Russia, which yeah. is the thing that Republicans used to like before they became just these puppets of winning an election. Right. But you can only be a hardliner if you have a penis. Sure. Otherwise, you're a bitch. Yes. Well, that's true. That is true. And um, sometimes even not then. You know. Uh, yeah, it is strange, though, because especially like kind of like growing up in the 80s, like the Russia was always our nemesis. It was like always like every villain was always Russian. And then now hearing people saying, well, you know, like what's so bad about being friends with Russia? It's like what are you talking about? Like being friends is the term they use for allowing them to attack our our election system. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's great to be friends with the Russians. Just don't be friends with Putin. Don't be friends with the oligarchs. The Russian people are fine. It's the kleptocracy. The, the 20 people who control Russia. Yeah. When we talk about what's wrong with Russia, we are talking about like a dozen people. Murderers, and what they're doing. Yeah. Mobsters. Yeah. A kleptocracy. Yeah. It's like judging America by the Mercer family and the Waltons. Which... And the Koch brothers. They do. They do. Well, they yeah. should. And, uh, no, it's... Uh, the, but, but, you know, you have to... Am get, I allowed more water? You have yeah. to hold the Russians to some task, which is that they seem fully supportive of Putin. They seem to be very supportive. There are people who tell you that the polls are fake. I don't think the polls are fake. I think Russians... <laughs> Are on Putin's side, and they just—they're letting—they're letting him do whatever he wants That's because they want to regain—they want to regain the power and the respect That's that they true. had under the Iron Curtain. Naftali, the Moscow politician, can't run for president of Russia. I mean. They don't have a democracy. No, they don't. They do not. And that's why he hates Hillary, because Hillary was the only person with the balls to say Russia is not a democracy. And that's why he wanted to make that's what that's why Russia has been had a campaign of trying to eliminate the concept of democracy. He wants people to no longer believe democracy. Are exist. we a democracy? To an extent. We're a democratic we're republic to we're, an extent. We're a flawed democracy. I mean, we're, our democracy was downgraded. Yeah, it was. And it deserved to be. We are no longer the. When kind was it downgraded? Of, recently. Yeah. When? Like, like maybe, the last few months. Yeah. By whom? I was. You could Google it. I forgot the name of the organization. But oh, yes, but, but, there was, but yeah. okay. I, I, oh, I thought you were just saying. No, there was a real, yeah, a real like scorecard of. Well, you okay. know that Jimmy Carter, 
who verifies elections all over the world, said in 2004 that if he were called in to verify an election here in the United States, the same way he has to go verify an election in Haiti, he couldn't verify the election results here in America. Well, that's that's fair. And if Jimmy Carter says something, you should trust it. Because he was a peanut farmer. <laughs> he was a great, great man. Is a great man. Who put... Solar panels on the White House like a traitor. And then, and Reagan took those right down and said there's not going to be any goddamn conservation in this White House. He was the Republican, Jimmy Carter. The myth about the Republicans and Reagan is they're tough and they're going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. But it was Jimmy Carter who told the American people what they needed to hear. Turn your thermostat down. Stop using Stop some, wasting gasoline. gasoline. Yeah. Wear a sweater. And that's why, you know, that's why George W. Bush learned that lesson. And he said, I don't care how bad the economy is. I don't care how 100 percent sure we are that we're going to raise taxes. Just don't tell them. Just say we're not going to raise taxes. We're not. Doesn't because matter. They're protecting about 20 families. Yeah, pretty much. They wanna... But they did raise taxes. That's in the, the George H.W. did raise taxes after saying, read my lips. No new no taxes. taxes. So did Reagan. Because Reagan raised taxes. Well, at what point, though? Reagan lowered taxes in, at, towards the end of his term, and that's how we got If you them. go back and look, he raised taxes more times than he lowered them. Okay. No, I didn't, and I, he increased the deficit. Like, I think he tripled the deficit by the time he was he left office. Well, there's also big arms buildup at the time. You know, there's, there's factors there. And cutting taxes. Yeah. Well, you know, you're not supposed to cut taxes while going to war. That's the lesson George Bush didn't know. There are a lot of lessons that seem to be. Plus, you had to pay for wars that we didn't know we were in. Yeah, people used to. Right. People used to. People used to pay more taxes for war, and by people, I mean every human being up until the year two thousand three. Uh, there was such. There was a thing called. You you pay the war costs money. You had rations and bonds, and people sacrificed because that's what you did in exchange for the war, not just making it ha be something we ha we go in debt for. Now we shop. That's what George W. Bush told us to do. Right. Don't don't change your uh, your habits. Go out and shop for democracy and buy I didn't, those freedom fries. I didn't consider that to be a very negative thing to say because I think what he was just trying to say is don't let the economy tank because you're scared. So I, I actually I don't criticize that. How about bringing back the draft? Well, I know you want to bring back the draft, but you want it for because uh, I hate my kids. Right. <laughs> yes. Well, if we brought back the draft, yes, you'd have a lot more rich people have a different attitude about who we send to die. Mm -hmm. I doubt it because their kids would never go. I mean, they would just send their kids off to college or to another country or start a business for them. Their kids would never go, especially now that they're probably going to start drafting women. And I, I think that it's funny because I've had this conversation um, with people and they're like, oh, well, you know, they, they're never going to uh, start drafting women because uh, – you know, Trump's daughters would have to go. And I just laughed in their face. Like, do you honestly think that Trump is going to... He didn't go himself. You think he's going to send his little girl to, like, go get her nails Bo broken? Bone spurs. He'd send Tiffany. He would send Tiffany. Bone spurs are serious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't remember which foot, though. Really? Yeah. He, they asked which foot it was. He doesn't remember. It's like the one that's isn't up that your ass. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that adorable? Uh, yeah, you know, ancient in ancient Rome, which I believe there are things you could criticize about the ancient Romans... You know, the torture and the slavery and all that. But you know what the ancient Romans did? If you wanted to be a senator, if you wanted to be the guy with the slaves and the, mo and the money and the food and one of the few people, because you know how hard living was then. So it's like to live in what we would consider luxury, you probably had to be, had to be on the backs of hundreds of people. Right. If you wanted to be that guy and you wanted to have that kind of decadence, it meant you absolutely had to be on the front line of the war. If you uh, the senators were all wearing their plate armor and holding their swords and fighting, not in the back, not making, not put on a show. That was the one thing. If you wanted to be in power in ancient Rome, you had to fucking kill people with your bare hands. And I respect that. I mean, obviously, every single person they fought in war was innocent. They shouldn't have done it. But at least the 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 leaders had to put their own asses on the line. There was and skin senators in the game. got yeah exactly. Senators got skewered on a battlefield kings died on battlefields at least then you'd have a little bit more respect for our senators if i if i got to watch mitch mcconnell put on his grandfather's armor and and haul himself out to a 
to a battlefield, at least you'd be like, okay, uh, I'm okay with him voting. You know that uh, Mitch McConnell was thrown out of the army. No, I didn't know that. Did you know why? No. Well, according to my sources, there was some inappropriate touching with another man. What? Yep. What sources? Well, Google it. Marco, Google Marco Rubio. Are you wait? Google Marco Rubio, pleasuring men in a park for what money. Oh uh, well, that I've heard. You know, you what are you that? talking yeah, about? Yeah, that and yeah. You knew that. How yeah. are these not more popular? Because that yeah, those things kind of got squashed, but like allegedly, like back in like the nineties, like Rubio was like really into phone parties. Foam parties? Yeah. That's where you go to a nightclub and they pump out a bunch of suds like from uh, like soap. And yeah. it becomes like a wall of suds that you can like walk into. And what happens is you can you can create like a little cocoon inside one. You can basically fuck someone on a dance floor because the suds are blocking everything. That's a foam party. But it's not necessarily just gay because I've been to them. Yeah. And I'm not gay. David. <laughs> Antonio Sabato Jr., you know about his gay porn, right? Well, that was softcore. No, 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 no. It was softcore. Testo- did you see testosterone? No, I, I saw did not. it. I saw it credits to credits, and I'm telling you, there was no <laughs> penetration. And it was hardcore. Was it? No, really? Was it? I was hard. Was that a- <laughs> to the core? Wait, was that? <laughs> wait, wait. Are you saying what did did we see? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Are you saying that Antonio Sabato Jr. is in a movie with actual penises? Yes. Like where you see he simulates. Penises. Yes. Hard. Yes. Testosterone. Penises. Yes. Really? Antonio Sabato Jr., underwear model, Trump spokesman, soon to be a congressman from California. Um, what are you Googling there? Oh, I just found out. It just so it's something that said Mitch McConnell court martialed for sodomy. And I'm I have to believe that might be a little bit of editorializing. What, what's your source? Uh, the source is a forum on Google Groups. I don't know how that's the first thing that comes up. That is just irresponsible <laughs> of Google. That it's a go- The first thing I put up when I put Mitch McConnell discharge is well, just a discharge. Ra- he was discharged for a discharge. Yes, I he was need- discharged for discharging. Boy, did I know that you would not let that go. Uh, yeah, We're well, spoon feeding. You, we already established this. Yes. Good God. Google I mean, Mitch McConnell gay. Yeah, no, I I see I see the uh, the accusations. Yeah, the well, there's also if you look closer, there's a uh, there's a Huffington Post. What is Mitch McConnell hiding? And, what uh, is uh, Michael Huffington hiding? Yeah, Ariana well, Huffington's husband, who hey. showed up to boy parties, underage boy parties. Did you really? know about that? Yes, I didn't know that that was an established can't be sued for slander fact. It is. A, <laughs> look up Amy Berg's movie. A, was Kevin Spacey there? Well, a, an, a known secret. They talk all about Michael Huffington showing up to boy parties. Oh, God. I'm just getting upset because every single article about Mitch McConnell's military discharge is just, it, it's like written in like colored Comic Sans font, so I can't even trust it. No. I, I'm trying to find one that's like a little bit less. Salacious? Yeah, yeah. Next you're going to tell me that former Republican Speaker Dennis Hastert was Guilty of inappropriate. Was he wrestling. convicted? Yes. Oh yeah, he was. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dennis Astor, the guy who was brought in because he was so clean, because mm-hmm. they needed to clean up their image, mm-hmm. so they just brought in this old man who was supposed to be the one guy that was unimpeachable, and he was fucking boys. Yes. Little yeah. wrestlers. Oh god. Yeah. What what is going on? Is it just because people who are that self-hating gays are the ones who work the hardest? Well, what's up with wrestling? What about it? Did you wrestle as a kid? A little bit. Don't you think that's inappropriate? Here's the thing about wrestling. that They say the same thing with fighting, with like jujitsu and UFC fighting. They say, oh, fighting looks like sex. I, also, I always say, you're wrong. Sex looks like fighting. You're, you're looking at it from the wrong direction. Fighting has existed before sex. I know that's probably not something I can say for a fact. I fighting think, existed before sex. I think they both kind of are just well, as old. Well, how did we get here to fight then? Well, I'm saying we were fighting each other before we were human beings. So, like, what we think sex looks like, which is, like, missionary position, that is definitely newer than fist fighting. Because chimps were fist fighting each other back when we were, like, 
proto-humans. Chimps? I've never seen a fist fight between chimps. They rip each other's faces off. Chimps are the most violent really? things in the... Really? Yeah, chimps are insanely are violent. violent. They but... ripped off that woman's face. Oh, in Connecticut? Yeah. No, they, they are warlike. Everything but the bonobos are very, very warlike. She they're burnt just made the cake. Of, they're made of <laughs> testosterone. Chimps but... are super violent. And I'm saying, oh, I'm saying, we, I, I'm telling you, fighting, fist fighting has existed before missionary sex. Well, I'm not saying like necessarily missionary sex, but sex had to exist before fighting. Otherwise, creatures wouldn't exist. Well, no. Well, I'm saying yes. Uh, reproduction would have existed maybe a little bit before fighting. But, I mean, those are both things that are just at the most core of, of just life. Well, Hope Hicks's boyfriends have combined the two. Oh, you know. My was... point is I was good at jujitsu, and that doesn't mean I, was, I wasn't doing it because I wanted guys on top of me. It just, it's just fighting and the sex happened to look similar. The ended up on his forehead. Is it jujitsu? I yes. thought that's Krav Maga. It is jujitsu. Ju- it is jujitsu. Ju- I get it. We all get it. Krav Maga is the Israeli martial art. And there is actually a move called the Jew Claw. Did you know that? I think Aziz Ansari pulled it on that woman. <laughs> Was, he's Indian. I mean, Pakistani. Didn't he do a thing with the claw? Oh, yeah. He put his two fingers in the, the girl's mouth. Yes. Uh, which I got to say. I never heard that move. I, I really felt bad about myself. I thought I knew all the moves. I thought I knew what all the moves were. Oh, everyone wants two fingers in their mouth. No, no if you were making what out with that a guy. <laughs> yeah. Is that bad? For a guy to shove his fingers in your mouth and then. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Know. I'm not really. Well, where was he? How was he supposed to get them wet? Uh, what other possible way could he have? Did he use the bathroom? Does he wash his hands? Like this is like all mood clean. killers. He looks very clean. Well, let's give him that. He I looks. Don't know. He looks like a very uh, clean man. He look like it doesn't look like he gets manicures. Yes, and he understands women. Oh, I, I've he's read his books and definitely want, a lover. He's a lover, and you know, I just hope his career isn't destroyed because he's a very funny man. The look on your face <laughs> has so much baggage <laughs> attached to that statement. Like, as I really don't, I don't. So salty. Because I don't know what you think of Aziz. I just know that you don't think good of anything. I don't think good of anybody. Yeah, <laughs> including myself. Now, did you th- did did you think that was over the line? That article, what? the article about him. I did think you? it was a poorly written article. Yeah, I do think that had it been written better, he could have been exposed as being a predator. But the the woman who wrote it was completely out of touch and then what she what she said to Ashley, Ashley Banfield, Banfield really showed that she was a classless person. Yeah. 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 And what she's did, not the woman who, she's not we're not talking about the accuser. We're talking no, about the, the writer the, of the yes. article. Yeah. What did she say? Oh, she uh Ashley Banfield criticized it. You know, you can criticize Ashley Banfield. I don't think what she said was exactly right either, but the way that the woman responded by just saying, Oh, no one under fifty cares what you say with your stupid highlights and you she was acting like a third grade bully. Yeah. And it really showed that this was not someone who should be writing articles. Well, here's the thing. Women her age, because I have a daughter her age, the the woman who wrote for Babe. They're not taking it anymore. Whether or not you, you, you can't say to them, temper it, slow down, they're not taking it. And there's nothing you can do about it. And they don't care what you think. And you better accept that with women. Not you, but men need to accept the fact. Because yeah. I've learned this from my daughter. They don't, they don't care. They're not into incrementalism. They're not here. They don't want to hear two sides of the story. Men are pigs, and they are pigs, and they better watch it. That's the message I received from my daughter, and message received. So that, that's, but you agree with that? That's, I agree with you. That. Want that, don't I mean, I, yeah. And I the woman who do. wrote for Babe, listen, as somebody who's old enough to be her father, I read that article and I go, "You're a pain in the ass." And there's a part of me that says, "Oh, shut up!" But she's absolutely right. And Aziz Ansari is a pig. We all know that. And, and the article was poorly written. It was clumsy and inelegant, but it was true. I think what we're saying is that the onus, the maybe criticism, is really about the writer of the article and yeah, not the, the woman that this right. happened to. The, the woman was at the mercy of the writer. And you know what? The writer is in her early 20s, and she got a couple of things wrong. But the one thing she's right about is men better watch it. 
I th- I I had. Oh, be quiet. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> um, Men are ex- talking. I I I know. <laughs> I was it's... just explaining to you. Can you <laughs> mansplain it to me a little bit quieter? Um, so. I had like a, so I read the article and so I know that I, I'm 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 older than these women, but I kind of felt like grow a pair like like the whole thing that was kind of upsetting to me was just like well she she says that she's like in his apartment and she doesn't want to make out with him but then she ends up blowing him because he has power over her because he's like this like famous guy and it's just like grow a pair if you don't want to suck the guy's dick don't suck his dick leave like you never you didn't have to go there to begin with you could have left after dinner if he was being a dick after dinner i mean i've been on so many dates that someone's a dick at dinner i'm not going back to their place and i've been on dates with guys that have been famous and rich and you know had great apartments and if you're being a dick at dinner i'm not going back to your place like and you know what that that speaks to the sort of lack of subtlety that everyone deals with now that there's everything's all or nothing everything people makes things that the extreme everything's brinksmanship because you're right she should have been more assertive at the same time, there are a lot of women who are not more assertive, and the kind of the kind of argument you'll get from the alpha male dudes, the the men's rights guys, are you cannot take away our taking advantage of timid women and their reluctance to say no. So I think that there there there's there's a subtlety to the argument because yes, women should learn to be less to to be less deferential and to be more assertive and not let men do what they want to them. But at the same time, people want to make that into, because it's a contrarian thing, they want to make that into that you're not saying the other side of it, which is it's not okay to take advantage of the women who don't know that. And so there's there's just, it's, it's a... Well, look, but uh, I also well, don't know that... that so I'm, uh, just to play devil's advocate, I let's say I'm Aziz, met this girl... Invite her over my place. We have wine. We have dinner. I bought her dinner. I'm like, hey, I'm going to go back to my place. Sure, I'll go back to your place. Now it's like, all right, well, she came back here a second time. Okay, like, oh, you don't want to fool around now? Second like, time. Yeah, so like this she- was the first date. So they, she was at his apartment twice that date, if I read correctly. So she met him at his place. They had wine at his place. Then they went they, to dinner. Then went they went back. to dinner, and then they went back. So now for me, and again, granted, I know I'm like old school or whatever, but like, first of all, first date, I'm not going starting the date off at your apartment. It sets a bad tone. Assertive or not assertive, like it sets a bad tone. Like, I don't know what their texting situation was, but if they were sexting back and forth and then your first date, you're meeting at his apartment, you're already setting the tone for the rest of the night. He didn't. Can I? Can I? Yeah. Tell you what. You can mansplain. Go on. Thank you. Just any time I'm referred to as a man, it makes me feel good. Because, but they met at the Emmys, and it, here's what I've noticed about stars: that a star walks into a room. Aziz Ansari is a star, mm-hmm. and he walks into this room, and everybody is deferential to him because there's something he can do for you. If you're a man, if Aziz Ansari walked into this room and said to me, hey, I'm going to go get a drink. You want to go get a drink? I'd say absolutely, because he's Aziz Ansari. And then he says, hey, you want to come back to my apartment? I'm a man. You're going to say, yeah, why I'm going to say yes, because, you know, I'm a comedy writer, and maybe this will lead to something. The same way this girl, who is a working woman, you know, who's... In her mind, she's... Working in what sense? I mean... No, she works in the entertainment industry on some level. She was no, a photographer. I, I, I'm, so I get it. I know you're making a hooker joke. I'm right. just keeping things civil. In her mind, she is... We're spoon-fitting, remember. This is not an office situation. She meets him at the Emmys, not an office situation. So it's nebulous. It's a gray area where she's thinking, maybe it's romantic. Maybe it could lead to work. Maybe it's both. Maybe it could start off. She's entitled to be confused and intrigued by Aziz Ansari because he's powerful and he's famous. 
So she's allowed to go up to his apartment and be confused. She's allowed to suck his dick a little if she wants to and then say, I don't like the way this tastes. Uh, and maybe he'll behave differently after a glass of wine. All those things, it's very complicated, the, the seduction. Human beings are not machines. She cannot walk into the situation knowing exactly what she wants. She may be there for sex. She may be there for friendship. She may be there for business. She may be there for all three. She doesn't know, and she has every right not to know. He's older. And he needs to check his privilege and behave accordingly. He needs to know, you know, this woman's a little starstruck. And I'm richer. I'm physically, financially, and socially more powerful. Well, he needs to check his privilege. Except the physically part, but yes. And, and so he He's needs to— He's a tiny to, man. Well, but he needs to behave properly. And it's improper to manipulate— somebody who is financially weaker, physically weaker, and socially weaker. Now, that's, the, that's, from that article, I got a sense that that's what he was doing. I've seen men do that. I've seen it's, it's predatory behavior. It's manipulating somebody who is... And he worked on Bill Maher. So he... No. Well, it's predatory behavior to take a woman or a man who is not as rich as you, not as successful or famous, and to flatter them and say, oh, you know, I know of somebody who's higher. I mean, I'm not saying Aziz did this, but I know that game. You know, you're, you're trying to get a woman to have sex with you, but you can tell she's ambitious. So you say, you know, I know somebody in Hollywood who might be interested in your photography. Right, and I think I would have been more pissed off if that article alluded to any of that. Like, But in the beginning, it was just kind of like she saw him there. She went to talk to him. He wasn't really paying her much attention. Then she kind of brought to his attention that they had the same camera. Then he's like, oh, then they started talking about the right. camera. But like, it seemed to me that she was trying to insinuate herself onto him to begin with. And then when he's like, oh, now now that she has his attention, then, you know, they're texting back and forth. He invites her out to dinner. I'm sure that it, she knew that it was in more of a romantic capacity. Why? Well, let me ask you this. But, but why, can't she, why can't it be both? Why can't she, as a young woman, who is, we're all taught to use everything we've got. Why can't a young woman use her whatever to you know, titillate Aziz Ansari. You can, but then don't complain if he thinks you're about to suck his dick because that's the impression you're giving him. Is it okay to think that he didn't do anything he should get in trouble for, he didn't do anything that he should lose work for, but still think she had a right to publicly say that he made her feel this way? Well, he didn't. He should, he should still be allowed to work, and he didn't rape her. And it was a, in many ways, it was a bad date. And he basically did what every guy in Hollywood does. They use their power, fame, and money to manipulate women into having sex with them. Is it possible that maybe he was a little railroaded by this, but it still is a positive because this was a, this was a Me Too kind of moment where a lot of guys who never imagined themselves doing something wrong said, oh, wait, am I doing something uh, right. that I should be worried about? I think the conversation is more important. Because I, yeah. I agree. I do I not agree. think he should lose work for this. I, I do I not think, think I this think should. I think it's more, there's no, uh, the conversation. criminal that happened. Absolutely not. And, it's, and, and even non-criminal things can still hurt you work-wise that I don't think this rose to the level of either. But, but you know, he is the paragon of virtue when it comes to femininity. And, and that is an issue, yes. He writes when books about dating, and he was exposed, if this is true, and I think it is, he was exposed to for be being a, a hypocrite. Yes. For being a hypocrite. There's a certain hypocrisy. That is fair. That's very fair. Because like if, if Joe Rogan did this on a date, I don't think anybody would be saying, not Joe Rogan. And I, and I like Joe Rogan. I'm a, I don't have a problem with Joe Rogan. I'm just saying, like, he doesn't go around, you know, writing books about, like, showing more respect for women and informed consent, even though he actually is kind of, you know, for the world he lives in, he, it seems to me like he helps a lot of people be less of an asshole mm -hmm. because the, the, I think the people who love him are the kind of people who need someone like him right. to kind of be like, hey, guys, guys, calm down. Right. You know, he's actually a very, he's a pretty smart guy. Yeah. But, um, but the same thing, it's just like, you know, it's like Doug Stanhope. Doug Stanhope is a guy who has an incredibly filthy, uh, dark act. You know, you wouldn't, if he had a story like this, people would be like, yeah. But if you're someone who goes around 
saying, you know, I'm the example you should use of how you should treat women, then it does rise a little bit to the level of maybe it is okay to to point out that maybe you felt he was putting on an, an act. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't know. And I'm, I'm, I'm really on the fence about it. I don't, I don't know if I agree with whether or not this article should have happened. You know, I know what I like in sex. I like, I'm not being funny here. I, I like a beautiful woman to pee on me. No, I like tenderness. Okay, Donald, continue going. I like tenderness, but I'm older. Uh, you know, I don't remember being aggressive sexually. I just, I can remember flirting, but I, I'm hardwired a certain way. I guess there are men who are hardwired to be aggressive sexually. But I think that's a porn problem. I think that that's like a, a whole other ball of wax where younger guys watch so much porn that they think porn sex is the way that sex is actually supposed to be. And they're so um, accustomed to like the mechanics of like, well, this woman is just a, a series of orifices that I can jizz in that they don't realize that sex is supposed to be like a connection and an intimacy. Well, first and there of may all, be some women, uh, you know, from what my limited experience, there are women, for lack of a better word, who want to be pounded. Sure. And there, There is. There, there, you know, right right yeah. yeah. I mean, and there are men. So it, it, it's very complicated, uh, and we should have... I think this Me Too moment, the virtue of it is the conversation about this. If, and it, maybe Americans could finally learn how to talk about something without it being right and wrong. And this is an opportunity for men to finally learn and women to finally learn what sex is. Because we don't discuss what sex is. We don't teach sex education. We don't teach what love is and how much it costs at the Bunnyland Ranch in Las Vegas. A lot of our sons are overpaying for sex in Las Vegas because they don't teach, no, they don't teach love and sex education properly in America, and our boys don't know how to make love to a woman. And you, yeah, you learn it through porn, which on the plus side, though, porn has normalized oral sex in a way that it wasn't before. Well, and, I think and, that there's probably a lot more men and women with throat with, cancer, both, yeah, performing oral sex and analingus exploded basically under porn. Is that necessarily a good thing? Yeah, I don't think ass should have been on the list. Wow, a bunch of Pollyannas in this room. <laughs> Ask Michael Douglas. Yeah, Michael Douglas got cancer from it and still endorsed it. So you're on the wrong track there. I'm just saying that, you know, look, nobody loves porn more than I do. I just wish I didn't. I'm not saying porn is a great thing, but I don't know if it's necessarily made sex all that much worse overall because I think it, it did normalize it for a lot of people. I bet there are married couples with a better sex life because porn exists. Because they wouldn't even know these. you could do some things. I, 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 once again, I'm against the, I do, I do not like it when, you know, porn becomes about like abusing women. I, I hate that. It takes me out of it. This stupid thing where guys like put their foot on a woman's head during sex. It's, it's stupid. It's, it's childish. Where would I find that? Everywhere. Okay. <laughs> just for my, I, I was just, I want to see what that is. <laughs> he's, he's, he's writing notes for later. <laughs> um, just tell him your favorite website. Uh, so I don't know. I think that, Porn has been around for uh, probably since the beginning of film, but I think that the the difference is is the accessibility of porn and the ages that that boys and and girls are starting to watch porn when they're like kind of in their formative years when they're you know preteens whatever before yeah, they would like see their dad's Playboy or something like that and it was just pictures but like. When you have like an 11, 12 year old boy that is watching a guy put his foot on a girl's head, he doesn't understand that like this is like something specific and that this is not like every exchange of sex. This is now his idea of sex. And so now he's going to go when he's like 15, 16, trying to like hook up with the cheerleader. 
thinking that, oh, yeah. well, this is how you do it. You put your, your foot on her head. And she's thinking, well, I guess this is how I'm supposed to have it because that's what they did in the movie. And I saw that. And it's right. okay for him to put right. his foot on. The, but they don't even yeah. know their preferences. And, they, and it's, they're hardwiring the brain. I mean, they, when you're that young, they're discovering that the iPhone and the Internet and Pornhub, if you're of a certain age, before the age of 25, your brain is still growing and it's being rewired. And so if you look at porn, it it, it, it changes the um, the receptors, your, your dopamine receptors in the brain. Yeah, you're not going to get you, – you're no longer going to be that turned on by, you know, just – the slight things you might see, you know, a woman wearing a dress that, you know, oh, oh wow, you know, be- right. before porn, I mean, little boys would would lose their minds, you know, if a woman's, uh, you know, bathing suit came off in the, in, in the ocean. Right. It would be it would be one of your most vivid memories the rest of your life. The, the nip slip in the Olympics this week. Yeah. The the the, the figure skater. who that lost, poor, Oh, that poor girl. You know, she had a Janet Jackson moment. Uh, an accidental one. Not whereas Janet Jackson was yeah. planned. No, I, feel, I felt so bad for that. Can one. you imagine, like, millions of people? Thirty years ago, if that happened, it would be the biggest story. Yeah, and yeah. now it's like, oh. Yeah. And I do agree that it was maybe it was a little better back when it was like your dad's Playboys. But I think actually, what you could do now, it would be really great if if a fifteen year old boy wanted to watch porn, he first had to read a Norman Mailer article. Like, just had to read one of the because you know. But, but of course, for you and me, that would be porn. Yeah. I used to come. Yes. Well, reading. I mean, no, look, Playboy had some really good articles. They really did. I don't know why, but they really did. Like people were people make that as a joke. They actually were great articles. That's not that's not not true. Yeah, there's some great journalism that came out of Playboy. I don't know. I I, I, I never... swear to God, he's right. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll agree with you then. Um, but and and with the oral sex thing, is that people have always been having oral sex. They just not like this. They just didn't talk about it. I mean, they oh. couldn't. They were having. There was they a dick just... in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I th- I think oral sex it has exploded over the last all over my th- face over the last ten years. I really do. I think that like I it's know. gotten way way more normalized. I think people like I mean, when people talked about the Aziz Ansari uh, article, I remember older people were aghast at the idea that part of the game was that he went down on her for a little bit to try to like get to sex. A lot of older people were like, "I've never heard of such a thing in my life." Going down on a girl as a means to have sex with her on the first date. Like, it seems like people, like, y- y- you talk to older guys, they'll say, like, a blowjob is something they got every five years. You know, it, that it was way harder to get that than having sex with a girl. And now it's much more of a stepping stone to it. And that's a good thing. Yes. Why is that bad? Because I- people are happy. They're ha- we, right. They're ha- we don't want people to be happy. They're happier because they're having more varied sex. I agree with you. As somebody who was married for thirty years, and I was dating again, it is a better world out there, sexually. Yeah, it's. It's. I think so. Yeah. No. I mean, look. Think about this way: How many people were born, lived, and died without ever knowing what it was like to get rimmed? How many of those people's lives would have been richer if they knew what it's like to have uh, ass to mouth? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not joking. I'm saying like— You're talking I about the ATM machine? Yeah, I'm saying, isn't there, a little bit, isn't there a little bit of saying that maybe your lives did get a little better? I mean— I don't want How many it. closeted I don't, I, I gay don't people had to go I, I their whole rather. lives without seeing— you know, what, I'm just saying, I, I feel like we, we had a little bit of puritanicalism that we didn't need and that, you know— I don't know. I because like even if you read like um, I mean, Oscar Wilde or or any like old like French writing, they they all talked about oral sex and and dildos in like the seventeen eighteen hundreds. So I think that people were doing it. I think that I don't know. I don't. It was taboo though. It the was the average person probably thought. I mean, but like. Sex in general is to talk about it in like mixed company or out loud and publicly is like always kind of been taboo and puritanical. But I don't think that people all of a sudden just started having oral sex. Well, also, I think that oral sex probably got a lot more popular after the advent of plumbing. It was probably oral sex was probably a lot harder to do before people showered is part of it, too. I mean, people smelled like dog shit for the beginning of time up until like 
the late 70s. But you didn't but, know that they smelled like dog shit. They knew. Well, I don't care if you live in that world. You all know everyone but stinks. But everybody smelt like dog shit. So it was like they were, you know. I'm I, not buying that. I think everyone hated it. I think even though they were used to it, they're like, I think people back in there were like, you know, I know no one talks about it. And that it's been every day of our lives. But doesn't everything just stink? No, I'm sure that. that I mean. Are, in a medieval times, people usually bathed once a year. Now, let me ask you a question. Mm hmm. I'm pretty convinced that oral sex existed, cunnilingus existed. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely convinced, though, that it wasn't until 1998 that the first anal fisting took place. I don't think anybody anally... F I don't think anybody... I think that everything sexual that happened today has been happening through the course of human sexuality. But how is anal fisting... I mean, I'm sexual. not sexual. I'm not in favor. Of I mean, it. They, they they probably had like bison fat at one point that they were using. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not, not something I'm happy with. I don't. You know, I'm well, not. who is enjoying the anal fisting? The fisty or the fistor? Both. I, there are people who like is, both. Is, I don't there, know why. Is there something on your knuckles that it's I don't know of, about? It's a sense of power that they have. It's a weird. I mean, I mean am I not looking at my knuckles properly? Don't get me wrong. It's not something I want to do. It is not something I would want to do. Is there a G-spot on my knuckles? I get freaked out if a girl even hints at wanting to do that. But there's people who want there's there there are there are I know guys How about you don't do it? For the I know How guys about for a just fact you want to do it just because it can doesn't mean you should. That they're I I yeah, I, no, I'm I, sorry. I'm old fashioned and I think people should make love the old fashioned way in a Vietnamese swing chair taking a dump on each other's faces. That's, I'm old school. Yeah, better than fisting. No, I, I just it think. It just makes it easier, I suppose. I mean, I don't, look. Am I allowed to resist? Am I allowed to be appalled by certain sexual acts? You can be appalled personally. You just can't tell people not to do it. Can I tell people not to fuck a dog? Yes, because a dog cannot can't give consent. informed consent, which yeah. is why I hate Shape of Water. <laughs> because that fish man had the intelligence of a dog. I don't care what you think. I don't care how much you love that movie. Yes, it was visually beautiful, but that fish monster never showed more intelligence than any dog. I'm even going to say a smart cat. I had this conversation with somebody. They were like, oh, well, what about all the interplay they had when she gave him the eggs and he was so happy and they interacted about the eggs? I'm like, oh, so you think he's different than a dog because of how excited he got when she fed him? <laughs> she fucked a dog. <laughs> that thing was a prisoner. He couldn't speak. That, how, where is the fish monster's <laughs> Me Too moment? This is a love story. At this day and age, we're celebrating that this woman took advantage. He probably thought he had to to get out. He probably thought, oh, I guess I need to fuck this janitor lady because she got me out of the prison. <laughs> but seriously. I am serious. All right. Is it wrong to fuck a dog? Yes. Why? If Suppose the dog has an erection. The dog comes. Well, then you're that's consent by the dog. Well, no, that's that's just like a reaction. That's like someone like hitting your knee and you're you have a reflex. Oh no 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 no! There are dogs who want to fuck women. There's not, it it, it exists. The dog it, it's that's where they're, I mean they're dogs. Okay, so it's so what is a dog to is walk. it against the law? Yes. What for, is against the law? Is it against the law for me to take a dog who hasn't been fixed, and rub his genitalia till we both reach simultaneous ejaculation? It depends on the state. Seriously. I mean, no, it does depend. It really does. And is the dog, what am I, I'm being serious. Is the dog being hurt? I think the dog is being molested. The dog doesn't have a choice. And even, if, I mean, look, if you tied me up and jerked me off, I would get an erection, right? Doesn't mean right. it's my choice. So it's just the fact that you, if, if there was a way you could actually communicate directly with the dog, it would be different. Suppose I'm walking and a dog starts humping my leg. Right, and I decide to finish him off. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna, I'll, 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 I'll go ahead and say, I don't think it makes you a monster. I'm not. It's not something I'm in favor of, but it would be hard to argue that in a case like that where the dog was the aggressor, that your the dog initiated hurting the... the dog. At the same time, though, if is the, a dog traumatized, but if you saved that dog from a research lab and then kept him in your bathroom, he may have thought that he had to have sex with you to not be sent back to the lab where uh, 
where, where the guy who played Zod and Superman works. So I think it, that's a factor. So I'm saying even if the dog is not being molested, the dog, the, the fish monster was. Well, I, I, I hate to pursue this. But Just because he married her. Sorry. In all seriousness, we're told, you're, we're told not to pass judgment on any sexual acts. Well, I, who's being hurt by a dog being jerked off? Is well, the dog being hurt? That's a similar argument to who's being hurt by incest, adult incest. That there are some things that we are against because they're usually bad. What about the donkey show? Well, no Mexico. donkey's ever consenting. That's true. I mean, is, look, it a, is a donkey show illegal? Just because they like it doesn't mean it's okay. Just because just because no one's getting hurt doesn't mean it's it's okay. Look, look, I'm I'm acknowledging there is a lot of nebulous uh, area when it comes to uh, passive dog fucking. Which is exactly the kind of phrase I wanted to say in the first episode of this show. So I don't know. That should be the title. I, th- I, I have fucking. said this before. I think that the ceiling of mainstream liberalism is being okay with getting fucked by a dog. I will admit that. I have said that I think that maybe that's that's the worst. Because I've heard people say, well, you know, they've had that argument about, like, are, you, are they going to let, you know, child molestation be okay if we continue allowing people to do what they want? I said, no, we never will. Liberalism will never be okay with that because it will always be about victimization. But there's a chance that we might let people get fucked by dogs. Yes. And you know what? If that's what we need to have a free society, that's one of the eggs that needs to be broken. I think that the dog can't give consent. So I'm going to say no with the dog. I agree. The dog can't give consent. Now, but as he's saying, though, what if the dog is the one making the decision? Humping the leg, I think, is also just another reflex. Like they, they'll hump a like a, a garbage pail. Like it, they just hump shit. I don't think that's necessarily consent. That's a, like a fart. I am coming down against dog sex here. I just want to say that I don't disrespect David for being in favor of it. I'm not. I get it. I'm not in favor. He's of it. just posing a, a question. I'm turned on by it. Right. And I'm. Any particular it. species? I, I the like breed? German shepherds. There's a little fantasy of mine. Okay. Being I guess Jewish. It's you fitting, know. Yeah. yeah. Right. It, 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 there's a full it's circle the thing. Most racist yeah. looking dog. Yeah. No, that's Dobermans. But, you know, a, a seven year old German shepherd would be, what, 49? Yeah. And dog. I, I don't like underage dogs. I'm not No, it sick. should be. I think it should. Ha- the dog should still have to be 18 in human years. It should be at death's door before it's legal. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, the the uh, the infrastructure bill. Um, I'm just. Th- we could circle back to that. You have to so. pay extra for <laughs> for the death rattle. What? I, I run for a, the, l- the what for the dog? Oh, oh, because yeah. the dog. If the dog. Has if you get eating. to yeah, if you get the death rattle, that's a little extra. But it's, I'm telling you, you, you haven't lived. That's Wouldn't right. that be an unhappy ending? <laughs> nice. Uh, you know, the wor- here's the reason it's bad. Actually, here's why, here's why it's bad to have sex with a dog, even if it wants to. Because dogs only exist because we made them. So they didn't ask to be born. Humans made dogs out of wolves. So if they want to, it's only because they're siding with their oppressor. Yeah. What we, I dig love to, dogs. what we dig to dogs and sheep is evil. It is. We turned an animal into another animal to suit our purposes. Well, we breed dogs. We breed with sheep. Well, it's a little different. Well, only in Scotland. <laughs> uh, look how ugly we go when we're not the ones in the barrel. Look how quickly we turn against the other. The second we're not the one everyone's looking at. But what did we do to sheep? We we sheep are the same as dogs. We made them out of goats. We, really? Yeah, we made sheep out of goats. I didn't know that. Yeah, how did we do that? Same thing we did with dogs we by bred- breeding them for meat and fur or uh, wool. We slowly turned mountain goats into what we think of as sheep. That's why when you clap your hands, they pass out because their their DNA is barely strung together. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. I did not I didn't know, know that, that about the sheep. So sheep are sheep goats. Are, yeah. 
Sheep are just goats that we that we bred over thousands of years to suit our purposes. So they became. I mean, think of what you think of as sheep. We made them docile. We made them fatter. We made their 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 fur better. We made them into something that better suited our purposes. Which it's like it's kind of shitty that we did that. You know, they should be really mad. And goats. I had no idea. Well, if they had thumbs, we'd be fucked. Yeah. 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 I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is there such thing as lamb's milk? I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I, I can't like walk you through the whole you know process of which exact one. I believe it's one of the mountain goats that looks like a ram. Okay, mm. that's one of the ram-looking mountain goats. Is the one that they that most sheep come from. But yeah, sheep were not like their own species or anything. I had no idea. No, I didn't know that 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 was like a science project. Certain animals change a lot, and certain ones don't. Cats don't really change. The modern cat, we've done just as much breeding with it. Still pretty, it can still pretty much just mate with any wild cat in Africa. They're basically the same animal. Uh, but sheep, we manage to change a lot. Uh, and believe me, I. What wish- could you live without? Porn or cat videos? I like. I mean, I think that the, when when cat videos overcame, overtook porn on the internet, because you know, I, mean, I don't know if you know that. No. Uh, a few years ago, they said that they, they marked it when it happened that cat videos officially became more popular <laughs> online than porn. That to me felt like an extremely proud moment to be a human being. Like I actually, I really did feel that. Really? I really did feel that. Like we're not complete dirtbags. <laughs> Given all the options, porn is not the thing we want to see most. That, right. that was the hope on the horizon. No, it, re- it really was. It really was. Well, I disagree a with you. Beautiful moment. No, for I humanity. disagree. I do. I think humans are fascinated by cats, and we want to look at cats because there's another animal that's worse than humans. We're fascinated by cats because cats. You are dead inside. No, no, cats are despicable. They're murderers. You are so dead inside. Cats are bad people, and that's why we look at them. I so, agree. I don't like cats. To be honest, like I like puppy videos. I I could do mm-hmm. without the cat video, but uh, cats I, are funny. But like the only yeah. cat videos I like is like the, don't they like hate cucumbers or yeah, something? Yeah, they like do. That? But that's mean. So I it just makes like them, watching. They think those. it's a snake. So like <laughs> they think the they only see a like, snake and they jump. Yeah. The, yeah. The only cat videos I like watching are the cat with the cucumber, but otherwise I like puppy videos. The way they react to cucumbers is hysterical. It's, yeah. They like, hate it so much. Yeah. Cats are funny. Yes. They they're adorable and they're vicious. And they but, cause and they they they've been the best thing about cats is how like you you know they they were the cause of the black plague. Well, the absence of cats because the Catholic Church started killing all the cats because some random lunatic said, I think cats are aligned with Satan. Because really? The, yeah. The, some random I can lunatic see how, cardinal I can see that. said, yeah. oh, cats are, they act like the devil. Just, you know, one of these people just trying to look busy at, at work. <laughs> and, uh, and they actually did this. They started killing all the cats. What happens when you kill all the cats? Rats. Rat explosion. That's where the bubonic plague happened from. I didn't know that. Yeah. Cats have been saving the lives of humans for millions of years. That's why everyone had cats in their house. They killed vermin. They're supposed to be in the house to kill the animals that you had, that you couldn't kill without a cat before exterminators existed. And they've checked the DNA. Dogs, we keep breeding dogs, and they're different from wolves yes. on a molecular they're, level. They're, they cats are. have not changed. Right. They're still... They're the hunt- same they were. And so you live 40 stories above the sidewalk in New York City with a cat that has nothing to hunt, they're going to be really neurotic. Yeah. They're right. really crazy. They're, they're crazy. They, they want yeah. so badly to kill little things. They're yes. desperate to kill animals. Yes. You wa- ever watch they're a cat? killers. You ever watch a cat? They are. Watch, they really are. Ever see a cat watch a bird and they start shattering their teeth? Yeah. Their teeth start banging against it. They want it so bad. They start drooling sometimes. Yeah. Oh, my God. They're just killing machines. Yeah. It's, it's really hilarious. Watching. I think, you know, you should be allowed to declaw your cat. Well, you can, but you can never let it out of the house again. I think you should let cats out of the house and declaw them so it's a fair fight with the birds. Because the birds, we're losing entire species of yeah. birds. Cats are wiping out rodent populations, so declaw them. Let it be a fair fight. I mean, I'm fine with the rodents, but they're, I'm not fine with the birds. Like, they kill so many birds. And I think, like, they said something like the average cat can kill up to, like, a 1,000 birds a year or something like that if they're, like, left outside. Yeah. Well, the problem with that is that right now— And what about av- furniture? They the, destroy—they kill more yeah, furniture, the average more couches ha- than the birds. The average house cat needs its claws to contend with any New York City rat. 
Those rats are gigantic. <laughs> we need they need to keep those claws. A one on one, the the typical cat is barely beating a rat. Oh my god. They are monsters we've created. They, you know there's not someone was mentioning they said, "Oh, we have mice." Someone in Manhattan, we have mice. I'm like, "No, you don't." Like you do not have mice. There are no mice in Manhattan. Don't go there. They're literally, <laughs> don't. I just saw that. I changed the subject. No, you know what I'm saying, though, right? Yes, I do. There Stop. can there that, are that, 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 that. baby rats. No, no, no. I'm saying mice cannot exist in Manhattan because mice and rats never exist in the same ecosystem. They the rats always kill the mice. So what I'm saying is a baby rat. Well, yeah. What I'm saying, if you think you see mice, you see rats because the rats have annihilated any in any. Uh, public, not indigenous, but but any mouse population is dead because if a rat is near it, it will kill the mice for the same resources. Yeah. So if you see a mouse anywhere, okay, stop. It has, I saw a mouse. it got re- it got released from. That means that mouse either got released from a pet store within the hour. Okay, or it you was, saw a rat. It was a mouse. It was not a rat. There are no <laughs> mice. There <laughs> are <laughs> no mice in Manhattan outside of pet stores. Mouse. I am telling you right Mickey. now. It was it white? Red. Was it white? No. It was not a mouse. It had red that eyes. Was, that was a newborn rat. Oh, my if God. If it was the size of a mouse, it's been alive for six hours. Oh, my God. Yeah. No. Yeah, they can't exist. Mice only exist where there are no rats in the ecosystem. Mm. Or not ecosystem, but in the area. And they can't get rid of the rats in New York City. They will. They'll figure it out. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can't get rid of the rats because, I mean, rats are, you know. Once what about if we just allowed cats to wander around like they do in Rome? It would help. But I mean, you'd have to. The sewer would have to just the sounds the sewer would make would have that many that many cats. You would just hear and the smell. Can I just tell a real quick story about a cat? Uh, oh, you walk into somebody's house, you know if they have a cat. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, my friend of mine used to date a porn star, and uh, in a house, and uh, whenever she would come over, his roommates would be like, you know, children about it. They'd be all excited. Like, Ooh, the porn star came over, and then the fir- so they they come over and they would want to like listen, and they said like the sounds this woman made were the most horrific, screeching, crazy sounds they've ever heard. They were scared. They couldn't even look at her when she left. Sounds like ass fisting. So and, and they they were so freaked out. And then when she came back, like they couldn't even look at her. They were so freaked really? out by the sounds this woman was making during sex. And she comes over and they hear it and they're just like, oh my god, what are they doing in there? And then the next night she didn't come over, but they heard it anyway. And they realized that was a stray cat fucking in the, in the, in the bushes <laughs> that they thought was this woman. <laughs> and have you ever heard stray cats fucking? To think that's a human being would be the scariest moment of your life. Well, I do like the sound that a woman makes during sex. Well, yeah, you're supposed to because it's a normal human sound. But, you know, I, the older I get, I like a little talking. No, no, I, 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 like, I, I like audible the audible part. I like to hear a woman going. <laughs> He's doing a get it because she's gagged. I get it. We all, we all get it. That is a. <laughs> I like how long you took to set that up. I was really. Do you know that I have a 23 year old son, who has now started to say to me, "Grow up." <laughs> <laughs> like I'll say, I'll call him with jokes, and he'll go inappropriate. This is. This is what's happened to my life, where my children now- Aren't you proud? They're rolling their eyes at my jokes and saying, you've crossed the line, father. Do they think you're telling, do they think you're being like serious and then they realize you're joking? Is it those kind of jokes? No, they just don't think it's funny or they think it's inappropriate now. Yeah, because I have this thing where like, I I just lie a lot and I tell lies that everyone should know our our jokes. Right. That everyone should know our jokes lies but then if you say with a straight face some people just believe you and they just think wow that's crazy i'm like how can you like i told my family my snake died i had a snake for 20 years (laughs) he just died did he really yeah and they said what'd you do they said what'd you flush him down the toilet i said yeah i flushed him he was like you know a five foot five and a half foot snake and they're like oh my god you flushed on the toilet i'm like yeah yeah but it didn't it it didn't get all the way like what do you mean it's still like kind of hanging on the side (laughs) And then, like, today I'm having lunch with my brother, and he goes, so uh, did you ever get that snake out of your toilet? I'm like, what? Yeah, I had to go get a snake. And he was <laughs> like, he was like, I was like, oh, yeah, no, it's still there. I mean, it's just like a skeleton now, but uh, eventually uh, enough flushes will get it. He's like, it's been weeks. And I'm like, how? You went to college. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. really believe right. that for a month I've had a dead snake <laughs> hanging out the side of my toilet, my only toilet. 
you have a dead snake between your legs. That's different. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. I always judge the intelligence of children by, I'm being serious here, by my ability to lie to them. And if they laugh, I know they're smart. That's how I judge kids, that you can tell them the most amazing stories and they laugh. And But adults, some adults will believe anything you tell them. Yeah. I remember I had a friend who really believed it when he, he moved to Hollywood and I t he... For like months, he thought I was telling the truth when I said Tom Cruise was four foot two. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but why would, he's like, well, you said it with a straight face. I'm like, that is that really all it takes? Now I mean, you believe that uh, the joke about, oh, I'm not gonna do it, no. It's a 9-11 joke, I'm not gonna do it. Of all the things you've said today. <laughs> we've been fucking dogs, we've got I don't snakes have a, out of toilets. I won't joke about 9-11. Fucking gagged women. My right. my second wife was in one of the towers and she survived and I can't joke about it because <laughs> because you're so upset she survived. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, God. All right, you guys. Well, this has been fun. Oh, See, really? You think so? I think so. <laughs> See, Dave called it. He said it was going to be fun and it was fun. It was. Uh, but we're going to have to wrap it up. But before we go, this was the quickest half hour I've ever done. Oh yeah. No, it was, it was just how, how long by. did we do? Two hours. Two hours. No. Yeah. yeah. It was 20 minutes. <laughs> was it well, really two hours? Yeah, it's Yeah, two but hours. it's going to be confusing because no one listening to this listened for two straight hours. So I don't think anyone's going to understand that what, we're, what we're talking about. I we'll, thought it was great. We'll figure it out. It was great. No one's going to hear it, but it was great. I, I, was it really two hours? Yeah. Yeah, it it's was. Nine two yeah. Oh, my God. Um, but before we go... Um, just where can everybody follow you on social media? What do you have coming up? What gigs do you have going on? Well, I have a podcast, The David Feldman Show, that you can download on iTunes. And Dave Cyrus does it. Hopefully you'll do it. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you. And it's a great show because I have great guests and I keep my mouth shut. Such guests he has. Great Fred guests. Fred Stuller, Judd Apatow. That's it. That's it. That's all the famous people who have ever been on that show. Lots, get of, lots of very good political guests. You, of, we yeah. didn't get hired for that show. Alan Grayson. He's we didn't get hired for, uh, for uh, that show. Cartoon time president. Show? Did you have to submit? Uh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't offered to submit. So it's not like people hate us. Um, I don't think I was offered to submit. It might have been. I mean, sometimes I just don't even. I don't submit anything because I'm busy with stuff. So it could have been during that window. Uh, Are you a comedy writer? She's a no, stand up. I'm a stand up. Oh. But I mean, I know I know Leach is on it. I know RJ's on it, and uh, no, I'm very happy for them. Those are great guys. My phone should just ring because of who I am. Yeah, I shouldn't. I should not have to ask for work. You're an Emmy the, Award nominee. People should aren't just you? give me money. Are I you should... an Emmy nominee or just a WGA Emmy winner? nominee? Yeah. Are you an Emmy nominee or just I, a, a WGA I've winner? I've won many Emmys, young man. Oh, with uh, with what? Uh, Dennis. Some stuff uh, I did for HBO. Oh, you can't talk about it. You can't, you can't talk about what shows you worked on HBO. I rather NDA. Not. NDA. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a weird thing to not be able to talk about where you got your your awards. Uh, but no, you're 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 an accomplished writer. And I, I and people should just give me money for breathing. I mean, that's that is essentially what your attitude is about writing packets. <laughs> I know. I mean, not that you're wrong to hate them. They are a lot of goddamn work. Not only am I against writing writing packets to get a job, but when I'm hired. I'm opposed to just writing in general. I, I don't feel... I like, remember. I remember The Office. Was I that bad? Um, all I remember is having is people having to tell me that you screaming about your divorce on the phone is not a bit. Because it seemed <laughs> so much like a bit. It was one of those things where like you're like, is that... He's, He's not. He's not really on the phone, right? He's not really on the phone. This he, he's doing this because like he's trying to make everyone feel happy in the office and doing a little doing a little Feldman bit, and everyone's just like, nope, that's just how he screams. That's uh, just. Was I screaming? Oh, it was hilarious. Who you, was I screaming at? Your wife's lawyer, or about oh, my lawyer. Your my your lawyer. lawyer about your. It was. Yeah, I know you weren't screaming at your wife. I know you never did that. I know. Never. No, you scream about the the, no, the I would, about, I, about her lawyer. No, no, you I, never not, said anything mean about her, your wife at all. No, no I, that's true. My, I went through four divorce attorneys. Right. And if you're a divorce attorney, and you're listening, take the wheel of the car and just drive it into a tree, please. But first, but accelerate as 
as much as you can. And on that note, we're going to have uh, Dave Cyrus tell everybody where they can follow him. And Dave Cyrus, S-I-R-U-S, is my name. It's the, my Twitter handle, my Instagram. Go ahead and say hello to those things. I don't know when this will be on, but uh, I have some roast battles coming up if uh, you happen to hear this. Uh, the 22nd is Christian Finnegan at New York Comedy Club. And the 27th is the championship with Eli Sayers at the stand. Nice. So I have two the two biggest roast battles i've ever been in the same week so that's a big thing i'm working on right now and uh i'm coming to next thursday great uh yes you're on the list you can i'll make sure they don't charge you for drinks uh but yeah go ahead and uh, check those out awesome all right and uh you can follow me on twitter at marissa smith and uh we will be back soon you guys thanks so much for listening have a great night bye that was great. That was so much fun. Did yeah. you have, were you yeah, happy? Yeah, no, it was good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And then, like, you can did great. you, like, try to maybe figure out a good, like, place to cut it? I've never done a show it? with you in a room. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Thank your you. show. Yeah. Kind of yeah like your show in your room. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Are you, you going to be, is, is this? Well, that, yeah, it's supposed to be our show, yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Do this. Do well, he's been telling me to do my own show for a while. Yeah. Yeah. But I like the idea of you hosting. Yeah, and where you're the. I, I prefer to be a second mic. Yeah, yeah I prefer to he, not have to run the show. You're likable, and you're you're fu- you're quick, and you're funny, and he's a loose cannon. Yeah, that's you're how not a loose cannon. And, and and you don't want to be anything other than a loose. cannon. Right. I don't want. I don't like it because I've had shows like that before where I have to round table everything and I have to say what do you think what do you think and right. I have to, and I don't like doing that I don't right. yeah. I don't I'm not as funny if I have to do that I think you guys have no and I, I'm like I usually play it straighter anyway like you know and I think like over the course of it like what we can do we'll have a great dynamic because the fact that you that you know that I'm you know a white Jewish guy and then you're a black woman is going to give me license to just say literally anything about women or black people. So that just because and no matter what I say, you're gonna always be like, "Yep, that's true." That we we're we're like that, and I think that that really creates a good dynamic because it means it means I'm I have carte blanche. Let me uh, imitate Los Angeles. I'm gonna run to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Did you have fun? I did. I enjoyed it. Thank you. I'm trying to get paid for something that I did a year ago. That's fun. I got paid from Judd despite not getting any jokes in the monologue. <laughs> well, he, you know, he said the nice thing now. Said, you know, I can do one year. No, it wasn't. But also, though, I listened to the monologue. I didn't see. They said there were a lot of one-liners.